It's been said, Virginia is for lovers. But here in Richmond, there is no love lost. Lead them to green at Richmond. Respect is earned at this raceway. Crash every time. What the f man? And nothing is given. It's Cup Series Racing right here on Fox. Welcome back to the Toyota Owners 400 from Richmond on Fox. There's about a 40 minute, minute hole in the clouds here, so taking advantage of a little bit of sunshine, what's left of it, and a track that is almost dry and ready to go. Let's dial up our pole sitter. All right. Hey, Kyle Larson, it's Boyer and the Boys up in the booth. You got us? Yeah, I got you. Well, man, they call these tires wet weather. This is wet weather conditions. You're on the pole. You're going to be the first one to the corner. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I uh, I don't really know. You know, I'm trying <laughs> to have enough confidence where I don't get swarmed into one, but then I'm also trying to manage the confidence and not go in there and blast it in and, and crash. Um, so I don't really know what to expect. I don't think any of us do, but... Everybody will be judging off of my entry, I feel like. So um, we'll see. Hopefully hopefully I just can do it right. I'm just going to try and go off a of field. So we'll see here. Is this exciting for you? I mean, we watch you race sprint cars, late models, everything. Indy cars coming in May. Is this exciting? Yeah, this is exciting. I honestly, I, I hope it stays wet for a while, um, as long as my car is good. Um, just because it would be similar to like Bristol, you know, where we're all trying to like learn at the same time um that's that's fun um as a driver to see who can adapt the quickest and you know i feel like our team does a good job of that so we'll see here it seems as the you know sky is getting clearer so i don't know how long it'll stay wet but either way it's going to be fun here for a little while well nobody finds a grip better than you man good luck out there thank you Nighttime on the way here at Richmond. A bit of beautiful sky there amidst all the clouds. So here's a look at tonight's Toyota Owners 400 starting grid. Kyle Larson on the pole for the second year in a row. His Hendrick Chevy teammate Chase Elliott alongside with his best start in over a year. Row two is Ross Chastain who finished uh, third in this race last year and 2021 Richmond winner Alex Bowman. Row three, Bubba Wallace led 80 laps at Richmond last July, and Todd Gilliland on his outside. Best career start position at a short track. Row number four, Martin Truex Jr., a three-time Richmond winner. All those wins coming since 2019. And Ty Gibbs, uh, currently on a five-race top ten streak. They're both in Joe Gibbs' Toyotas. Row five is Austin Sindrick for the second week is the best qualifying Ford. And Joey Logano, two-time Richmond winner. Here's Jamie Little. And Joey Logano is making his 550th career start tonight. And oh, how he hopes it is a memorable one. It has been a tough start to this season for Joey Logano. Only one top 10 finish. I talked to him earlier today and he said he feels like this race here at Richmond tonight is his best opportunity for a win so far this year. He loves short track racing. As Kevin mentioned, he's a two time winner here. And by the way, they had a good qualifying effort. He will roll off Tim. Joey Logano looking for a good night tonight, Regan. Well, Jamie, if there's such a thing as home field advantage in NASCAR, that is exactly what Denny Hamlin, who's from nearby Chesterfield, Virginia, has at Richmond. Four wins, 18 top fives, and over 2,200 laps led at this racetrack. Success is expected when the 11 car comes to Richmond. That is no different tonight, no matter what the conditions are. Crew Chief Chris Gabehart told me practice went well yesterday, and if it does get into a situation where strategies come into play, that is where this team excels. Look for Denny, who starts 11th, to be very good tonight. Thanks, Regan. Just finishing up a bit of track drying at the entrance to Pitt Road, and they've released the field behind the safety car, and they're on their way. So we're going night racing, and that means glowing rotors and flaming exhaust. Here's a closer look with our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. And Mike, it is so fun when we're under the lights, especially at a short track, when the driver jumps out of that throttle and we see those flames come out the exhaust pipe. Let's go to our Toyota Camry virtual car, and let's show you exactly what's happening. First, we're gonna go inside the cockpit of the car. You'll see the pedals there, the throttle pedal. The driver does the best job he can to keep that throttle down on the straightaway, but he has to roll completely out in the corner, sometimes jumping off the throttle. 
Let's go under the hood, the throttle body. That's what feeds the air to the engine. Watch the butterflies. Butterflies open, throttle full open. Butterflies close, the fuel injectors are feeding no fuel to the intake when the butterflies are closed. But even though there's no fuel being fed, there's still residual fuel in that manifold. It starts heat hunting heat and oxygen. That in turn is what calls those flames out the exhaust pipe, guys. Makes for a show. Well, I want to see flames quick, Clint. Let's, I uh, I, I'm, I'm really excited for this because I'm not driving. <laughs> but I, I love what Kyle Larson said in his, his pre-race interview with the unknown. And I think uh, a guy like Kyle Larson, and there's a lot of guys like that in this field, love that thrill. There's the Toyota Camry XSE that leads the field. All new for 2025. And in showrooms soon. 400 laps here on the three quarter mile Richmond Raceway tonight. Three stages, of course 70, 160, and 170 laps to finish it off. The fuel window, well, that may not be of much consequence. Everybody's talking tires. They have nine sets of new Goodyear slicks, or eight sets new, plus the one set of scuffed carryovers for qualifying. But here they also have four sets of the Goodyear treaded, don't call them rain, call them wet weather tires. NASCAR says they won't have these cars racing in a full rainstorm, but if the track is wet, they will mandate putting those tires on. All the cars will come down in a non-competitive pit stop, put on the wet weather tires, and they will run them under the green flag. Kevin, let's peel back some layers on these tires. All right, wet weather tires. We saw this one other time on a, on a circle track at Wilkesboro last year. You were in that car. We ran the heat races in wet weather conditions, almost identical to here. What are some of the challenges, not only as a driver finding the grip level, but the teams? Only four sets of these things. Well, that, that's the unknown. We don't really know what they're going to wear like when the track starts to dry out. That's going to be when the tires start to get eaten up. And as a driver, you got to take care of those tires. But the, the stagger, there's no stagger in these tires. So these drivers and crew chiefs all had the option to make what they would call qualifying impound adjustments on their car before they were able to go out on these wet weather tires to loosen the car up. Basically, you got to free the car up a certain amount uh, in order to make that less staggered turn through the corners. So when this track starts to dry out, you have have to be able to say okay how much am I how tight do I need to be because you have to go because these these rain tires will actually run faster than the than the slick tires uh, when the track starts to dry out. Yeah, I think everybody's going to be very uh, surprised on the speed, the grip level that these cars have. We saw it in Wilkesboro. The wear is going to be there, but you're talking, when you say less stagger, it's an inch and an eighth, Larry told us, less stagger. That is a bunch. Well, um, that's going to make you, all these cars extremely tighter, and they're made the adjustments. You said that. But I think uh, some wear issues are going to come into play right here. You might see cars falling back and cars being able to drive up through the field that maybe couldn't have done that under normal conditions. Well, now let's talk about track surface. This track, the asphalt, has been here for a number of years. And down at the bottom of the corners, it's fairly well polished from all these cars running and running across it, where if you get up toward the wall in the corners where nobody runs when it's dry, the asphalt has a lot of tooth in it. And when the track's wet up there, it may have more grip. It may, and you're going to see these drivers move all around. But the one thing I will warn you of, all those paint stripes on the racetrack, stay off of those, Mike. They're slick when <laughs> yeah. they're wet. Danny Hamlin and, told us yeah. that just a minute ago. And, and the other thing is there's this big ground patch going into turn one that I don't think any of us know whether how slick it's going to be. If you need to drive straight over it, can you turn down into the corner? How slick the start finish line is going to be. And these paint stripes all the way around the track. So these drivers are going to be hunting for grip. They're going to be feeling things out. How fast can they go? Now, here's why we have not started the race. Uh, they are still using the jet dryers to dry pit road. Uh, the NASCAR track drying system, uh, blowing air at the bottom of the track to at the track to just move that water up and away uh, those vehicles have stopped and parked all that's left are these five 
jet dryers that it looks like uh, they're going to leave pit road here and head for home. Well, that's the tricky part of this whole scenario. As the track dries, pit road is still going to be wet, and we have to protect our pit crew members on pit road because if we do have to come in and get into the pit boxes, we don't want the drivers being competitive trying to gain an advantage and slide through the pit box and wipe a, a bunch of pit crew guys out and hurt them. So uh, non-competitive pit stops while we're in the wet conditions, and when NASCAR deems that pit road is ready to be competitive, they will let everybody know. Larry Mack. Yeah, remember, pit road speed is 40 miles per hour, and the way they factor that is the size of the tire, the gearing, the miles per hour. These tires are a different size to a small degree than the slick tires. They just told Ross Chastain on your digital dash, go to page nine because the stagger, the rollout on the wet tires is a little bit different. So page nine will correct for the speeds on pit road for you. Page nine, Larry? <laughs> Boy, when I was racing, oh, we only had one page. Tack recall. <laughs> All right, here's what uh, Ty Gibbs has to say about the condition of the racetrack. Uh, NASCAR is curious. What do you think about the track? What smell? Yeah, let's go racing. Yes! I agree, Ty Gibbs. I love young drivers. What did you tell me a little bit ago about this scenario? You didn't really like it, did you? Well, I, I, I would love to watch it, but uh, <laughs> I was really nervous about everything that was happening at North Wilkesboro when we, when we went through this condition, but it was really fun. And I had a lot more confidence in the wet weather tires after we got done at North Wilkesboro. I think every driver here saw that and wants to see what's going to happen here with a full damp racetrack. So at Wilkesboro, in that heat race, when the track was quite wet, they ran these wet weather tires. Uh, Daniel Suarez won it. The race was very competitive, and the lap times were faster than in the second heat when the track was drier. There's going to be one groove that drives really quick, but when that groove, groove drives really quick and gains speed with those tires, the tires are going to wear out really quick. So we got to take care of those tires. We only have four sets. Here's a look at what happened on All-Star Weekend at North Wilkesboro last year. Yeah, North Wilkesboro had a, a very worn out surface and we were all nervous going into the race, but this was the this is why we're here right now with this condition to say, okay, we can do this because we, we had that heat race where the track started damp. Nobody really knew what the wet weather tires were gonna do um, in race conditions. We've tested it a few times with some sprinklers and things like that. They had a wet weather test a few uh, months ago at Bristol in case it rained there. And here we are. So I think everybody's in a good position uh, to go out and try this. Very important that this works. I mean, think of the time. Uh, this, this literally could make the difference in this event happening tonight here for us on Fox and not. Um, this is a big, big moment in our sport, something we haven't seen yet under points conditions. Now NASCAR has the option to start this race under a green yellow condition. That means we're counting laps, but we're not racing. Uh, and that is an option. They have chosen not to do that. They want to get the track as dry and as ready as possible. They've done that and they're going to get one to go when they come around. Oh man. Right. I think these things are going to wear. I, I, when I look at this condition, you see it right there and Keselowski's on board. The track is somewhat dry. Obviously, you don't see any kind of dry uh, surface bleeding through yet, but I think this is going to be hard on these tires. It's and I wet. feel like it's going to uh, uh, wear them, and that's going to play in somebody's hand yes. and not another. But I like what Kevin said. You're, need to, you're going to need to try to find grip when it's wet, and when the track, when that groove starts to dry, you're going to need to get away from there and try to preserve those tires. Boy, that's two different. I think you're going to see goals. what you haven't seen at Richmond. I think you're going to see the start of this thing three, maybe even four wide. It's going to be wild. All right, it's the Toyota Owners 400. So the honorary starter is Brandon Cheatham. There he is, proud owner of a 2008 Toyota FJ Cruiser. Here's uh, Bubba Wallace's radio. All right, team. Let's get to this first part like we talked about. Let's settle in, lock in, and execute all night. See you at the end of the thing. Yeah, bye. We're with you. Damp track, wet weather tires. What will we see for 400 laps in Richmond? Let's find out. Green flag. You can see them all just going into that corner, feeling it out, then going. 
Larson did not baby it in there. Elliott right to his outside. Once the lead takes it. Three, four wide back there. Well, now you're seeing these drivers learn every lap. Okay, this that corner had this much grip. Now we're going to go to the next corner, push it a little bit harder, and we saw guys all the way up against the wall. And the best thing that I see right now is a very limited amount of spray, which is vision is everything that everybody was worried about. They're completely all over this racetrack from the top to the bottom, Kevin. I think visibility is some of that reason, too. Don't get in front of that guy. Don't get in his wake. Third place, Bowman Gilliland up from sixth to challenge and take third. Chase Elliott found the grip on that outside. Took the lead from Kyle Larson. This is a big weekend for Chase Elliott. I haven't seen him leading the field much lately. Here he is, Chase Elliott in his nine car. How about you, Elliott fans? This is the highest he has started in a cup race in over a year. He seems straddling that paint that you were talking about, Kevin. Yeah, and you see Kyle Larson uh, feeling his way around. We don't expect him to, to take it easy, and, and that I think he was definitely in the hardest uh, position to start this race, being the pole sitter, but he's definitely right on Chase's tail. They are almost scraping the wall in turn two in the middle and back of the pack as everybody looks for grip. And there's going to be some up top there where you don't usually run where the track is dry. Well, and somebody's going to figure out a groove that, that really works and start making some time. And those spotters are going to call down to their drivers and say, hey, so-and-so is uh, two grooves up. And, and right now you see Kyle Larson on the outside of Chase Elliott. Every lap, every corner is a learning experience. This reminds me of a dirt race, and you heard me say that to him on that radio. Uh, his background, Kevin, in a dirt racing, moving around, finding the grip, that plays right into his wheelhouse with the five car. Larson back to the lead. Tyler Reddick is one of those up scraping the wall looking for grip. Another dirt racer. Yep. Knows how to move around and find that grip that works for him. Third place changes hands again. Bowman to the inside of Gilliland. Bowman back to third. Justin Haley has gained 10 positions now. Josh Berry, Chase Briscoe, nine each. Daniel Suarez, eight. Well, two of those four, Haley and Briscoe, dirt racers again. Finding that comfort level with the grip, moving around on this racetrack. There you see Ty, Ty Gibbs all the way up in that top lane. This is fantastic. I've never seen cars all over the racetrack at Richmond like this. Yeah, and this is going to change the whole complexion of what happens later in this race. If it rains a little bit more, I think everybody knows now the spray wasn't too bad. So if it does start sprinkling a little bit, we'll have some, all the standing water knocked off the racetrack. But if it dries, that's really where it's going to change things. Going into three, Bubba Wallace dropped underneath Ross Chastain, took a spot, and then took another one headed for turn number one. On Todd Gilliland, Gilliland comes fighting back on the outside. Okay, we talked about who is moving up. Haley, Barry, Briscoe, Suarez, as you said, Mike. Who's off the pace? Kyle Busch in his eight car. Josefar down. Um, Keselowski's down four positions. Well, Brad Keselowski is one of those drivers that we thought would be one of the favorites. And like you say, he's going backwards. Probably, he's probably a lot like me, not real comfortable in the rain conditions. Well, Kevin, you told me, it goes back to that Sager conversation, maybe overcompensated, freed the car up too much. Very possible. And, I, and that's the other thing that we're all going to learn as we, as we go through this run is what's the fall off? What's the lap time? Is it, are they going to get better or worse? Are the tires wearing out? What's it going to be? Elliott has dropped to third. Bowman to second. Elliott comes back for second with Bubba Wallace closing in. Yeah, and we see Todd Gill and right behind him in, in fourth place on the outside of, of Bubba Wallace. Great qualifying effort by Todd. What a great start to this 400 lapper. Well, I was really nervous going into that, Mike, uh, of what was going to happen in turn one, that it could just go sideways in a, in a big hurry. But, man, these guys did a great job, and that was awesome. So were they. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you heard that in Kyle Larson's voice. You don't get that very often with that boy. 13 laps complete. Kyle Larson and Chase Elliott have traded the lead back and forth.
All right, guys, welcome to Richmond. Uh, obviously, uh, we got some weather in the area tonight, so it'll kind of be up in the air how that goes. Um, they're allowing us to put our wet tires on right now. It sounds like they would possibly go green, kind of similar to what we did at uh, North Wilkesboro last year. If there's not a you know big downpour or um, you know a bunch of sand and water on the track, they'll have to kind of make that call as they go. So could potentially start on uh, wet weather tires. Um, we don't really know yet. It's kind of up and kind of up in the air. So uh, be ready for that. Let's go have a great weekend. All right. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Bundle home and auto and save. And by Toyota. Let's go places. Well, happy Easter, everybody. 18 laps complete. Hope you had a great day with family and get to enjoy this race tonight. We get started just a little late, but we've had 18 green flag laps so far. Kyle Larson had le has led most of them. Now before the race we were able to sit in on the team meeting for Kyle Busch's team. All right guys welcome to Richmond. Uh, obviously uh, we got some weather in the area tonight so it'll kind of be up in the air how that goes. Um, they're allowing us to put our wet tires on right now. It sounds like they would possibly go green kind of similar to what we did at uh, North Wilkesboro last year if there's not a you know big downpour or um, you know, a bunch of sand and water on the track. They'll have to kind of make that call as they go. So could potentially start on uh, wet weather tires. Um, we don't really know yet. It's kind of up and kind of up in the air. So uh, be ready for that. Let's go have a great weekend. All right. Kyle Busch rolled off 15th tonight. Spent a lot of time up in that high groove. There is a Bubba Wallace taking second from Alex Bowman and setting sights on leader Kyle Larson. Now the track is drying while pit road is still quite damp. Uh, pit crew members are out in their pit stall with squeegees and leaf blowers trying to get those stalls dried out. Business is picking up. It's getting faster. You're saying it's drying out. That's exactly what it's the lap times are showing. The fastest lap early in the race was 2387. Now 22 laps in. We're we're in the 90s right uh, right close to that, Kevin. Well, now now is when it's going to start getting interesting because the lap times are really fast. We knew the rain tires would have a lot of grip. But as we see that track starting to lighten up on the bottom of the racetrack and get drier, that's when it starts to become really hard on those tires, and you're going to start seeing a lot of people start to wear that right front tire out. Bubba Wallace has the Xfinity fastest lap of the race so far over leader Kyle Larson. Uh, Denny Hamlin, who's currently 10th after starting 11th, and Ryan Priest. Regan. Mike, you see Bubba Wallace up to the second position right now. The talk through the garage earlier today was how much to adjust for the wet weather tires if that happens. For Chief Booty Barker, one of the guys that told me, I'm not going to adjust very much at all. They were very good in practice. He said, I don't want to mess up a good car. I'm going to leave my car alone. It's working right now. Jamie? And Regan, his teammate Tyler Reddick back in 14th, up five spots since the start of the race. Talked to him before he got in. He said he had a brake issue in practice and qualifying, and that's why he qualified so poorly. He said every time he races here with this car, there's brake shake and there's nothing they can do it about it. So he's working his way forward. Felt like if he can get through the pack, he's going to have a fast car, and we're seeing it. 25 laps complete. NASCAR has told the teams that there will be a competition caution at lap 30. Well, 
that's just because of the lack of experience that we all have on, on the wet weather tires. And I think that's a that's a good call by NASCAR just to give everybody a chance to, to look at the tires and say, OK, we think we can go this far. And at North Wilkesboro, it was very, very dry when, when we were in these conditions before. And, and we didn't really know what to do to the car. So they, they just need to look at the tires and understand what we're dealing with. And NASCAR has told the teams that they will be putting slick tires on at the competition caution that this will be declared a dry race. You don't have the option of running one or the other. NASCAR either mandates it's wet weather conditions or it's dry conditions and we're going to move from wet to dry on this caution coming up. Well it's certainly dry and fast. I mean, there's no question about that. You can see it right there in a the preferred groove on the bottom. Actually, the bottom two grooves right there, you can see light gray coming through pretty good. Now, because pit road is still wet, these will be non-competitive pit stops, meaning that if teams make their normal stop and adjustments and exit pit road with the rest of the group, they will retake the positions they had when they came onto pit road. And that's all done for the safety of the pit crews. Yeah, and this is this is going to be where it gets really interesting, Clint, because it's it's kind of dry and we're going to put slick <laughs> tires on it's dry at the bottom but it's kind of dry in that second groove so this will get interesting Chastain coming up knocking on the door those Hendrick drivers running side by side looking to pounce on both of them battle for third and there's the caution Woo. take a breath and we'll take a break we got 30 laps in to the Toyota owners 400 in Richmond on wet weather tires and now we will switch to drives.
Welcome back to the Toyota Owners 400 on Fox. We're under the competition caution uh, that flew at lap 30. Here's your aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between, Goodyear. More driven. Down to pit road, Jamie Little. Well, Mike, Denny Hamlin has been singing the praises of his pit crew this season, and for great reason, especially a couple weeks ago when they won on the last short track race at Bristol. So let's meet team number 11. I'm A.J. Rosini. I'm the front tire changer, formerly an IndyCar tire changer for two and a half years. Now I'm in the Cup Series with seven wins. Devin Euchre, rear tire changer. I started pitting cars at 18, and now I pit for the best driver in NASCAR. Happy Easter. My name is Dylan Dow. I am the tire carrier. I am a former Cup champion, Xfinity champion, and Daytona 500 champion. Joel Alexandre, Balou Boignon, Jack Mann, former Green Bay Packer running back. My first language was French. Kenneth Purcell, Fueler, 20 years on pit road with over 50 wins and a four-time consecutive champion with Jimmy Johnson. They'll do. That, they'll be just fine. Yeah. How's your French? <laughs> Very qualified. You know French? Terrible qual uh, French, but how about a Green Bay yeah. linebacker? That is awesome. Shows They're, you the, the men that those guys are. A proud bunch, and rightfully so. Chris Gabart, of course, the crew chief up on the box. Running things for Denny Hamlin, and uh, here's a look at his career. 20 wins as crew chief. He's been with Denny since 2017. Won the 2019 Daytona 500. Now pit road is not yet open because NASCAR has elected to bring the jet dryers down pit road to try to uh, dry that area of the track a little more. And while the cars are circulating, we listened in to race leader Kyle Larson. Yeah, that was uh, that was fun. I think it's ready for slick, so for sure. You know, I'm debating how far we go back to what a normal slick car setup would be. So I'm gonna make the best educated guess. We'll see how it goes. I think that's a decision. It really is, and and when when you have to free the car up, it's tough to get back to where you need to be. All right, drying pit road at lap 34 in Richmond. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Wendy's Classic Hamburgers and by Credit One Bank. 
A look at NASCAR's most recent Easter Sunday winners. As they finish up drying pit road, which should open here in the next lap or two. 39 complete, 31 to go in stage one. Well, I think that that opens up a lot of doors for us as we go forward in the future. Great job by NASCAR getting this this race started. Spray was a perfect amount when we when we started this race. It got our track to a racing condition a lot faster. Absolutely. And I think the next time we do we have these rain situations, we know that we can go in exactly what we did, probably a little wetter. Now we're going to have non-competitive pit stops for this first round of stops. Uh, cars will line up when they come back on track in the order in which they entered pit road, unless they have an abnormally long stop but pit road is going to be key to this race as it turned out to be key last Sunday at Circuit of the Americas first you have to get on pit road that's not easy here well this is a tough racetrack you see that orange box right there and Tyler Reddick was was practicing you have to have all road. four underneath that that is not that is a foul you kind of come back and serve a pass through for that and once you're on it you have some hot spots on this pit road. Well, you have the, the curved corners and coming out of the curves and going into the curves and in, in section nine there, you have the start finish line um, or, or section that's a little bit shorter that reads a little bit different on the speed. So which means speed up, slow down, speed yeah. up, slow down. Which it, one is it? Very it gets, challenging. It gets very, very confusing as a driver and you have to have very good markers to know where you need to go up in speed and where you need to go down in speed. Pit penalties last year, 11 in this race, seven in the summer race as pit road is now open. Larry, in addition to changing to the slick tires, what kind of adjustments can they make in this changeover? Yeah, it'll be some of the same adjustments they made to go with the wet weather tires. They can adjust the, the blades on the front and rear sway bar, how stiff or soft they are. They can adjust the each of the shocks. You've got adjustments on the two rear shocks, the front shocks. That's probably the two biggest things, Mike, that they'll be adjusting, which is what they adjusted when they put those wet weather tires on. We saw some of those right sides coming off there. It looks like Truex the right front was chewed up a little bit more than your race leader Kyle Larson, but I think they still had plenty of life in them. That one looks good. All right, here's Bubba Wallace's radio. When we use it like Wilkesboro and some other blip, when we go through the slicks, it's a massive change. It's, you're going to think something is broke until it settles back in. Yep, yep, good reminder there. Absolutely. Booty Barker, Bubba's crew chief, with a bit of advice, advice there. All right, we'll get everybody lined up in the same positions they were in when pit road was opened and get back to green. 40 laps complete in the Toyota Owners 400 at Richmond. Paul Wolf, the crew chief for Joey Logano, just came off the pit box. What's your impression of those wet weather tires and how they looked when you took them off? Yeah, I mean, ours didn't look terrible. I mean, you saw a few guys, our teammates there got really tight and fell off, so I wasn't sure what they were going to look like. 
Um, we just don't have a lot of experience, right, doing this. And, you know, we made some adjustments to start the race, um, kind of anticipating what it would drive like with those tires. Um, seemed like we were reasonable. Um, we're able to kind of hold our track fish and gain a few. And um, now we'll see what we're like when we get back on the slicks here. All right. Good luck. Thanks. All right, ready to try this again. 43 laps complete, but now Goodyear slick tires on these cars for the first time tonight. And they have doubled everybody up, but we're going to run at least one more lap of caution here. Let's check it with Jamie Little. Paul Wolf, the crew chief for Joey Logano, just came off the pit box. What's your impression of those wet weather tires and how they looked when you took them off? Yeah, I mean, ours didn't look terrible. I mean, you saw a few guys, our teammates there got really tight and fell off, so I wasn't sure what they were going to look like. Um, we just don't have a lot of experience, right, doing this. And, you know, we made some adjustments to start the race, um, kind of anticipating what it would drive like with those tires. Um, seemed like we were reasonable. Um, we're able to kind of hold our track fish and gain a few, and um, now we'll see what we're like when we get back on the slicks here. All right. Good luck. Thanks. Paul Wolf, a former driver in the Bush North Series. Then came to Team Penske as crew chief for Joey Logano since 2020. Two cup championships and an Xfinity Series championship. Regan on tires. Well, Mike, just for a reference, you look at the right front tire that just came off of Denny Hamlin's car. This tire looks pretty good. The outer edge just a little bit worn on the front edges of this tire. To, as a comparison, this is what the new tires look like. Not too bad for the first go of it here at Richmond. Not bad at all. Now NASCAR under caution. They're going to pick up the pace here, run a couple of laps just to make sure everybody is up to speed on uh, running on slick tires here with the track still, I'd say not 100% dry, but but nearly there. Next Sunday on Fox, week two of the United Football League, the Houston Roughnecks take on the D.C. Defenders. Spring just got stronger when the hard hitting action continues. Next Sunday at 4 Eastern on Fox. Yeah, for me, guys, this was always the part that I, I was never comfortable with uh, on slick tires when you have the, the, the light gray color on the bottom of the racetrack and you have the somewhat still looks wet from the second groove up. And if you look right there on the on the inside groove, it's the light gray where it's dry. That outside, like you said, nee, not so yeah. much. I think I want to start on the bottom, Kevin. Well, I would agree with you on that. And and, and really down the front straightaway, it's only dry uh, up next to the wall and on the back straightaway up next to the wall. Really, uh, everything else still looks wet to me. But that was never the case, Clint. Once the once the slick tires got the heat in them, it always seemed like it gripped okay, uh, even even if it looked like it was still somewhat darker. Larry Mack. Yeah, we saw all these adjustments and a lot of them had to do with wedge adjustments. Paul Wolf talked to Jamie Little about adjustments and with that zero stagger with the left and right side tires being the same size, the car didn't want to turn. So they know now they've got an inch and an eighth difference. The car's going to want to turn on its own. Everybody I saw, including Paul Wolf, they put wedge in the car, which is what that will tighten that car up. They've adjusted for this additional stagger. Thanks, Larry. The Toyota Camry XSC leads the field out of turn number two. 
Lights are out on the roof. We'll get the green flag next time by. Want to brag on Josh Berry, who started back in 30th and gained 15 positions, up to 15th at the time of the caution. And Justin Haley started 36th, took the caution flag 16 spots higher in 20th. Great run in the first green flag run here tonight. Let's get back to green. Well, and that's what I was talking about, Clint. You see Bubba Wallace up on the outside right there. It may look a little bit wet, but see him try to keep Kyle Larson pinned down as much as possible because he knows above that line is going to be going to be slicker than he probably wants it to be. Sure is. Kyle Larson just barely holding on to that bottom, putting the pressure on him. He's definitely holding him down tight, door to door. And all of these guys are same thing as when they were in the rain. Every corner is a learning corner of, of how much grip there is, how dry it is, what can I do, how hard can I roll the center, how far can I drive it in. So you got to learn every corner. Well, I can tell you how much, about a second faster already. Well, and the other thing that goes with that is just the way that these tires feel. Uh, the, the rain tires are going to feel like the car moves around a lot more uh, with, the, with the way that the, the tire is built. And these slick tires are going to feel much stiffer. Look at these two leaders, neither one willing to give. Each one wants the benefit of clean air that comes from being out front. And they are still almost welded together side by side. OK, hard to be that Kyle Larson on the inside, especially as tight as he's holding him on the entrance of the corner. It's exactly what Bubba's supposed to do. But Kevin, you've told us before, loose in is a hard thing, very challenging for this racetrack. And with that car on your outside, makes you loose. This next gen car is not as sensitive to the to to that as the as the old car was. But the thing that that I noticed Clint is Kyle Larson is having to go down the bottom of the straightaway where it's wet wetter getting into the corner than it is uh, on the outside and, and Bubba fights the opposite in the corners with the wet part being the second groove up wetter. It's not wet. It's drying. Doesn't give any room for air. No margin for air when a car is that tight on your outside. That's great racing. Bubba Wallace's cars are extremely fast. Well, now we're dealing with a racetrack that's been cleaned off by these rain tires, doesn't have a lot of rubber on it, and we're going to have to put the rubber back on the racetrack, so, uh, and still dealing with drying conditions. So what's going to happen right here, as we see Josh Berry underneath uh, William Byron, now you're going to go through all these different scenarios with your car. Is my car tight? Is it loose? And it's going to change as, as the track dries completely and starts to rubber up. Barry up to 13th, continuing to move forward. Daniel Suarez underneath Chris Busher. That's for ninth place. Yeah, you said Josh Barry <laughs> from 30th. That is a fantastic effort out of that four car. You told me Rodney Childers said that car was fast. Seems to be on point. Well, the other thing that we don't really know what we're dealing with as we watch Josh Barry continue to go forward is what this racetrack is going to be like at night. We've never raced this next gen car here uh, in complete night conditions, let alone starting in the wet. Well, one thing it did do is made these cars faster. Larson just two laps ago ran faster than he did for his pole effort yesterday. Martin Truex up three spots since the restart with his success at Richmond. Martin is tonight's guaranteed fit sponsored by eBay Motors. Winner of three of the last nine here. And finishing top 10 in nine of the last 10. Martin Truex headed for the front in fourth. Well, this is a Martin Truex style of racetrack. I think with the, the tire wear and the fall off uh, as this race goes, you know, Martin will just keep himself in contention and grind away as, as we go through the night. Busher and Barry continue to fight it out. This this time it's for 12th. Ryan Priest, Daniel Suarez have gotten past both of them. I am so impressed with this four car. Josh Barry driving straight to the front. There's another one, passing a guy like Chris Busher. Man, he's laying some lap down, yeah. lap times down. Sorry, Chris Busher, previous winner here. We expect him to to run well tonight. Another guy we expect to 
to run well tonight are both of these guys actually. Uh, Chase Elliott needs a good run. Joey Logano needs a good run. And we, we, we have pinned this as a very important night for, for Joey Logano. We know this is a great racetrack for him. They've had great results. And we need to see this forward run faster. And if they don't do that here, we know we've got big problems as we go forward. But so far, so good for Joey. Todd Gilliland, the leading forward in fifth. Logano is sixth. Here, Joey shifting down the back straightaway, back to back to down shifting right on the bottom of the racetrack. One top ten finish in six starts, average of 23rd. Yeah, you know they they qualified well. They put themselves in in position to have great starting spots and track position at the beginning of the races, but. Uh, aside from Daytona and Atlanta, when the green flags have dropped everywhere else, it has just been go backwards. We're inside of 10 to go in this stage, coming up on eight to go here. Man, it's going fast. Well, there's been a lot that's happened wow. in this first stage, Clinton. Kyle Busch back in 27th, running right about where he restarted. The uh, Rebel Bourbon on board. Yeah, Kyle is struggling with the handling in his race car. Wasn't good in the wet weather and not very good in the dry either. Continues to go back. Oh, oh. Barry into Suarez. How about this? He, is he going to? Almost saved it. it. Almost. Wow. Good spot back around. Good spot back around. Caution a wave at lap 64. That could be your stage end. Be close. Man, Barry, obviously not ideal here, but he is on fire, on a roll. You can see him lift out of the gas. He's pretty high up on the corner. This unfortunately got in the back of him. Battling for ninth and so close to a save there for Suarez. He fought that thing all the, way, all the way through turns one and two. Yeah, and that's a that's a really vulnerable spot right there. As you turn in the corner, you're just so light on your feet, and you see the four car get into the back of the 99. Spin him out. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Suarez, he was another car that had been marching up through the field pretty well. He's starting from the back. He won't be happy with that. Well, the thing he will be happy with, Clint, is he doesn't have a crashed race car. No. All right. <laughs> He's very frustrated right yeah. now. Here's what's going to happen. NASCAR says we're going to ride this caution to the end of the stage, Clint, as you said. Yeah. And then the end of stage pit stops will be non-competitive stops, again, because pit road is still wet. Uh, Josh Berry finished second here, subbing for Chase Elliott last year. And uh, here's some audio from the four. Started 30th, folks, all the way up to ninth. All right, we're going to run out these caution laps to the end of stage one, which will be won by Kyle Larson. So we'll step aside. Josh Berry, Daniel Suarez, contact, bringing out the second caution flag of the night.
He's coming. Well, he's running 18th, sir. He's coming. Not eight. Saturday on FS1, witness one of the greatest lineups of all time. Powered by three MVPs, Otani, Betts, and Freeman. The Dodgers take on Cody Bellinger and the Cubs. Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on FS1. So NASCAR's called an audible. They are running the track drying equipment, the jet dryers, down pit road once again. When they are complete, with that task, they will make a decision whether or not this round of pit stops will be competitive, and they'll make that call and let all the teams know before they open pit road, of course. Well, I, I know one thing, Mike. We we need to get this pit road dry uh, because we need the we need the competitive pit stop. NASCAR's done a great job in managing all this, but uh, the longer the brakes get for all these things happening, the worse the arguments get up here in the booth. And I apologize to you, uh, but Clint and I have spent the last five minutes arguing about our fantasy teams. Well, I think you're in, you're in trouble. Kevin. Here we go. Stage in. Just hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Larson gets his third stage win of 2024, and his first at Richmond. Well, let's check out some of the drivers who've been hot this season. William Byron. First driver to win two. Christopher Bell, three top three finishes. Best average finish, Ty Gibbs tops that list once again. And Denny Hamlin is the only driver to lead in every race. All right, fellas, how many of those, including Martin Truex Jr., the point racer, a point leader, are on your fantasy teams this week? Um, go ahead. Well, I want to go to the one that's not on there, on the list or my fantasy team, and it's Bubba Wallace in his 23 car. That car is fast. Didn't see that yesterday. Didn't have him on my list, and it was a mistake, folks. Bubba Wallace, extremely good. Yeah, he's not on mine either. And, I, you know, last week, William Byron caught us off guard, right? We, we were sold on yep. the Toyotas and what they were doing on the road courses, and Bubba Wallace is just out there doing what he does. You know, and I, I heard you say William Byron. I look up, I'm like, heck, he's still not even in the top ten. This is a car that is on everybody's list, has to be. Last week's winner, um, only multiple winner of this season so far, still yet to crack the top ten. Well, this is a finicky racetrack, and, and with the conditions that we, well, we talked about it earlier. We, we've, we've been here before. You've come to the first race, and you're like, oh, man, we ran really good. You come back to second race. Let's just put the same setup back in that car. You don't even, you get lapped. And so this is just a really finicky racetrack from temperature, from tires, from whatever those conditions are, it can change quickly. And that's exactly what happened to Kyle Larson here last year. He won the spring race, won it going away, came back in the fall, couldn't, Went find, a his, down. couldn't find his way around the track. It's, Why? What happened? What changed? I mean, that takes me clear back to Brian Patty, uh, 2012, came here extremely fast, come back the next time, terrible. Brian, what did you do? Listen to me real quick. It is the same car and the same setup, so I don't want to hear it, Clint. Just track changes, man, conditions. And this night race, by the way, is a big part of that. They practiced and qualified yesterday. We've already seen laps that were faster than what they ran yesterday. Very challenging to pinpoint the grip level in this racetrack for the teams. All right, yeah. waiting on NASCAR to make a call here whether or not these will be competitive pit stops, which would be everybody's preference if pit road is dry enough. And uh, we will have competitive pit stops, and let's introduce you to Chase Elliott's crew before they go to work. Nick O'Dell, front tire changer. I've been in the sport for 22 years as a tire changer, and I have over 150 wins in NASCAR's top three series. Chad Averitt, rear tire changer. 18 years in the sport, 2020 champion, father to the two coolest little dudes I know, Connor and Colton. Jared Erspommer, carrier from Omaha, Nebraska. I've been with Chase since he's at Junior Motorsports. Yeah. TJ Simke, Jackman. 2020 Cup Series champion, 2021 Mechanics Wear, most valuable pick crew. John Giannato, gas man. Been with Chase Elliott since his rookie campaign. Guinness World Book record fueler for most vehicles refueled in an hour. <laughs> Alan Gustafson uh, from Ormond Beach, Florida, is the crew chief. 38 wins. Championship with Chase Elliott. Began as crew chief with Kyle Busch uh, with 
back in 2005. Let's have a look at pit crew rankings this year. Average four tire stop time. Uh, dominated by the top teams and note Chase Briscoe's team up there uh, in third spot amongst all of the Penske, Hendrick, and Gibbs teams. Well, we make we make a big deal out of this because it is a big deal. Yep. You got to have good pit stops. You got to do everything right on pit road if you're going to win these races. All right, competitive pit stops for the first time tonight. Kyle Larson leads them onto pit road. Here's Jamie. And Joey Logano has made up five positions since the start of the race. Just a little bit tight center. He wants some help with that as his team goes to work. The 19, a Martin Truex Jr. Pretty happy overall. Has a little bit of brake shake, but overall he's happy with the balance of the 19, Regan. Chase Elliott, we just met his team a moment ago. His car right now is surprisingly la lazy with the front. That means the front tires aren't working as good as he wants to through the middle. And the five car of your leader, Kyle Larson, the entry is okay for him. The middle is too tight. Larson leads him off pit road. Chase Elliott up two positions. Chastain, Barry Priest each gained a spot. Tough stop for Todd Gilliland, minus four. Getting ready for stage two. Kyle Larson, your stage one winner. Also first off pit road. So here are the points earned in stage one. Wallace Bowman, Truex Logano, Gilliland, Elliott, Chastain, Barry, and Priest. One I to look, go. I, I, one to go. I, I look at that and I, I see Kyle Larson and Cliff Daniels and, and his team have done a great job with rain tires and slick tires and keeping that car up front and qualifying on a pole and Kyle Larson. Yeah, he's him. 
Everybody wants to be him. Yeah, you're right. I wish I could go that fast all the time in anything I drove. Well, you were pretty good at it, Kev. Not, they, well, yeah. come on. They asked him the other day about his reaction to having the new short track package under the car. He goes, oh. I forgot. I, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> it, just, it doesn't even Get in the him. car, drive. And, and by win. the way, have you ever seen me drive dirt? Actually, I was. It was pretty I bad. I was your owner. <laughs> yeah. It was terrible. All right. Stage two. Larson Wallace back to green. Oh, Bob Wallace got loose on the throttle. Gets back to his outside, though. Yeah, we saw this last time, Clint. We saw Bubba Wallace be right on the side of, of Kyle Larson. I think Kyle Larson has a little better idea of where the grip level is this time, but Bubba Wallace fights back on the outside. Going to think better of it and go to the bottom. Maybe a crossover almost there. Well, I think you got to be really careful about using up your tires on the restarts. We're, we're back to, to dry racetrack, uh, and this racetrack is going to settle in, and we're going to see a typical Richmond race as, as we get two and a half, three grooves that we see dry in, in the corners right there. But these restarts can be tough on the, dry, on the, on the tires. Well, and that was always the balance for me. To be good here, you need to be good on a long run. What's that mean? You need to be loose and free on a short run. Barry continued to impress. Okay. All the way from the trunk, 30th to 6th, folks. Well, the good news about Josh Barry's car is it's handling really good and going to the front, and it's very bright with that Sunny D logo on it. You can you can spot that thing from anywhere, but he's he's having a great night. That's what these guys needed was to put a, a night like this together. And Josh Berry, just one of those short track racers, and, and this is right in his wheelhouse. Now, I don't want to jinx this, and I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but a lot of times I didn't want to be too good on a short run because that meant I'm going to pay the price on a long run. Not saying that that's the case with the four whatsoever, but... It does make me look over my shoulder a little bit when I see a car this fast this early into a run. Well, yesterday in practice, the long run was actually where he stuck out, and, and the short run was, was not. They didn't qualify well and had to go out early in qualifying, but the long run was their strength, so we'll just have to see how this plays out. Byron and Reddick, this is for 15th. Well, we know that Reddick has, has struggled a little, a little bit at, at this particular racetrack, and, and we... We expect Byron to, to be in the front all the time, but this is one of those nights that William Byron looks like they're going to have to, he and Rudy, Rudy Fugel are going to have to work on uh, making that car better and, uh, in order to get it to the front of the pack. Well, certainly clean up the mistakes. See Barry picking off another one, Bowman to fourth place. But another one I saw back there as well was Christopher Bell. He's finally gotten pointed in the right direction, liking what he sees out of his race car, making some moves. Bell with the uh, Toyota owners, Cam. Needing these two teammates in front of him, Priest, Gregson, to get it sorted out. Get it sorted out, boys. Get back single file so I can try to make a move on you. Bell restarted 15th. He's up to 12th. And this is exactly what we, we thought we were going to see when we started this race in, in the, with the damp conditions and knowing that we were going to go through uh, some damp conditions into drying conditions into dry conditions and we were going to see a lot of movers and goers as, as we went through the first part of this race and the other thing that's going to happen is that groove moves up it's going to be clean Clint and that, that outside of that racetrack is going to have some grip but it's also going to tear up the tires. Joey Logano coming back after Bowman got into the corner even with him but Bowman pulls away in the back stretch. Joy was telling me he was excited, uh, telling us, excuse me, in pre-race, excited about this race tonight, excited about his race car, needing a big turnaround, keeps it, uh, slowly but surely marching back up through the points. Well, both of these guys, Alex Bowman and Joey Logano, previous winners here. Joey Logano consistently uh, winning races and, and running up front here, so good night for them. Now the flip side on the Penske squad, is the 12 of Ryan Blaney. Jamie back in 28th place. Yeah, Mike, and he started this race in 12th. I just checked in with the team, and they said basically he just burned up his rain tires and lost all that track position. Then he was complaining that he lacked stability. So when he came in for that first pit stop, they had to make a big adjustment, but they also had a bit of a slow stop. So he went all the way back to 32nd, Mike. Wow. Uh, Austin, uh, excuse me. The 24 had a tough stop. Uh, they got blocked in trying to leave. Uh, a number of drivers with issues on pit road, but here's a look at that. So 
Byron tries to exit. Oh, can't get there. Chase Briscoe. Yeah, and these cars are really tough to turn on pit road. They just, they don't, they don't turn very sharp. It's just uh, the turning radius when you're going slow is is definitely not good. It makes it hard to get in and out of the pit stalls. Deep breaths, okay. Deep breath. Long, long ways to go. Yeah, it's four. I would just, I can't get around them. Like I'm blocked out with the wheel and spun the tires. Yeah, well, you, you gotta get slow. We just, even if we gotta give it up, it's gonna be easier than backing up. So slow down, coming in. Stop on the sign. And that's, yeah, and and that's that's tough here, because the pit boxes are short. Uh, there's a lot of cars still on the lead lap, and. What they're telling him is you got to stop shorter because you know that he's going to come around you and be in his pit stall when you when you go to leave. So you got to leave yourself angled, uh, go slower in a pit box, stop further back in the pit stocks, and, and be angled to be able to get out of the pit box because you know the car is not going to turn that sharp. Set yourself up for the exit. That's right. Give up a little on entry, get the car positioned correctly, and, and it will save us time in the long run. Ninety four laps complete. Kyle Larson has been out in front for all but six of them in the early going here at Richmond. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Goodyear. Discover the possibilities. Goodyear, more driven. And by Verizon Frontline, built for 5G, built for first responders. 101 laps complete. We continue under green. Kyle Larson continuing to lead. He has never lost here after leading at least 50 laps. Two for two. He's been out in front for 96 of them so far. I am so impressed with Josh Berry. This four car, just what an impressive run so far. You can almost feel the pressure coming off of that driver inside that car. Rodney Childers and company on the box. Man, they needed this. This is what they longed for. How about Joey Logano going after Bubba Wallace for fourth? 
There we go. We see the rotors glowing on Bubba Wallace's car. Those are always some of the things that I love about Richmond, being able to see those rotors glow and the flames coming out of the pipes. Tells me that car is not rolling the middle. He's having to drag the brake a little bit longer. Probably he's tight. Starting to march the wrong direction back to fifth from second. And you saw him, you saw that left front tire sidewall as he touched the apron. Uh, that, that tells me he's also tight trying to use that apron to help him turn in three and four. Now Martin Truex two seconds off the lead. And his lap times within a tenth of Larson's as are Barry's and Logano's. Well who's going to challenge Larson you, you said it his stats are good here but so are that boys right there. If anybody can tend it can be that Gibbs bunch with Mark Truex Jr. behind the wheel. Larry Mack. Yeah y'all were talking about the rotors glowing on the 23 car. A lot of the Toyotas when we were on the wet weather tires were complaining about brake shake and that means they probably were not getting enough heat in them. They had them cut their fans off. I think the spotter or Booty Barker the crew chief for Bubba Wallace just noticed the rotors glowing said make sure your brake cooling fans are on. It's Larry. Yeah and Richmond is one of the racetracks and especially in this next gen car where the, the, the brakes would actually be too cold. And w when they get too cold and you push on them and then they get hot going into the corners, they, they cool off too much down this long front straightaway. So always a very tricky balance on what the brake temperature would be. But when the, when the wheel starts uh, shaking here from brake shake, it literally will take the wheel out of your hand. It jerks so hard. Wow. Here's a look at your Toyota top performers. Truex and Wallace in the top five, Bell in the top 10. Well we've got a, a different tire than, than what we raced here last year. Uh, Goodyear brought a little more tread on the tire uh, the, the, the tire that we ran at Phoenix and a lot less fall off here at night than, than what we saw during the day Clint. And you're going to see more. You're definitely going to see more and with that you're going to see cars starting to fade back like we touched on with Bubba Wallace and cars marching to the front. Look down through the list Bell Christopher Bell Byron really has not came up very far but Keselowski Reddick Chastain some of those names Busher keep an eye on those guys heading forward a couple of the five Fords in the top 12 right now with Butcher taking the spot Gilliland had a rough pit stop dropped four spots that's why he is back in 11th after having a great qualifying effort Kyle Busch looking back at Brian Priest. Just inside the top 20. Yeah, we heard Kyle talking on the radio earlier. He was not happy with his car. He wanted major adjustments to his car. See the Rebel Bourbon onboard camera there with, with Kyle Busch. Stenhouse and Hosevar. This is back at 25th. About 17 seconds off the lead, and Blaney right with them. I'd say half the times I looked up and saw Stenhouse's car in this race so far tonight, it's been on the outside of somebody else making passes. Yeah, and typically Ricky is one of those cars that, that usually finds that outside groove to, to work it. Uh, before everybody else. Whoa. Oh, you see him not. Contact. Either he got loose right there or he's not happy with him. And a little of this, I saw him down there in the pits. He had to back up. It was uh, blocked in, just like Byron. So he lost some spots on pit road. But this is a good racetrack for Ricky Stenhouse. He likes Richmond and the things that you're talking about, his uh, maneuverability and ability to be able to run that outside and do crossovers and things like that make him pass uh, you know, a lot of cars here. 114 laps complete. Kyle Larson leading Martin Truex by 1.9 seconds.
Welcome back to the Toyota Owners 400 on Fox, 121 laps complete. You're watching our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Well, time to start thinking about a revised pit stop strategy after starting this race on wet weather tires. Well, they're pitting. <laughs> it's, they're definitely coming down to pit road. Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski, the first two. Here comes some more. It looks like Priest. Well, we had heard him talking on the radio a little Josh bit. Josh Berry, about, your third place car. Yep. With, about being scared of, of that pit road being wet. And, and sometimes that's the deceiving part that we talk about uh, being not as slick as what you think it would be looking wet. Regan? Well, the four car, Josh Berry, get ready to hit pit road and come to the service of his team, as you see right there. Right now, he's a little bit tight in traffic, good in clean air. They started to get ready about two laps ago and then quickly call him down pit road. Kyle Jamie. Bush, Priest, Gallup, Grala, and more. Jamie. You see the 54, and Martin Truex Jr. just comes to a stop in his box. He had just told the team, I fired off good, and guys, I'm still happy. This car is good. They had a good feeling about it, and Mike, all three of his wins are rich under the lights. Uh, more takers. Lots more on pit road. Well, I'll tell you who's not. So we had Truex Jr. on pit road. Your leader, Kyle Larson, is still out there. Long stop for Austin Dillon. Ross Chastain is in. This Noah is Gregson. I, I think you're going to see a split strategy here. Some two stop this stage, some one. Hosevar in. Well, once one car gets on the pit road, if you're going to go on this strategy to, to pit in the middle of the stage, you have to come with them or you just lose too much time and don't gain the benefit of the new tires to take off and gain the lap time. Larry, what do you do if you're the leader, Kyle Larson? Yeah, what they may be doing, we'll watch him here for about three more laps. They may split this exactly in the third, which is basically about 50 laps a run. I watched Chris Gabehart with Denny Hamlin in the July race do the same thing. That way he gets a little bit of advantage on the top side with the fresher tires. But if you're going to go it on one stop, he's going to have to go about another 20 something laps. Christopher Bell is in. Regan. Mike Christopher Bell doing a nice job moving up through the field right now. He's a little bit too tight in traffic, but told his crew chief, Adam Stevens, if we get clean air at some point, I think it's going to be right where it needs to be. He's fast right now. Corey LaJoy comes to pit road along with Chase Elliott. That leaves just 11 cars on the racetrack who have not stopped. So here's the hardest part about what Kyle Larson has to do right now, guys. He, he has to get out of the way of all the cars that are going so much faster. So what happens is sometimes it slows down big chunks of lap time. So that's the thing that Kyle Larson doesn't want to do right now is give up a big chunk of lap time with those faster cars. Jamie. And Joey Logano in his pit box now took off tight. Building free as they run a four tire stop. Here scheduled good stop for the 22. Austin Sendrick is in. Logano's Penske teammate, and that'll leave nine drivers on the track who have not been on pit road since lap 74, led by Kyle Larson. Well, I'm the, thinking this five car is going to stay out. Yeah, and, and he had a lead, right, Clint? So he he had a little something to lean on. His lap times were were faster than than the second half of the field, but he had a little bit of a lead to uh, to give up that gap. Well, I think the fall off, right, and the speeds that they were running is what brought them to this. Got some five radio right here. Ryan Blaney in. That completes the Penske stops. Well, that's certainly what affords them the opportunity to be able to do this, right? The pace that you hear Clay Fidelian is talking about still likes what he sees. But where does your pace start going backwards? Exactly what you said, Kevin. It always is a determining factor at Richmond is how much time you lose with these cars. Time it well when these cars on tires pass you. There's Martin Truex on fresh tires. Now, he was six tenths of a second uh, behind Larson. When the cycle started, Ricky Stenhouse in and out. That leaves seven cars on the racetrack. But that's just by yourself. It's the time that you lose with these cars passing you. You see him right there. Lost it, another three exactly. tenths. Exactly. Look at the time that he lost right there. Three tenths. Sometimes it can be as much as a second. Have to be very careful in the timing in these cars passing you. Larry Mack. 
Yeah, Bubba Wallace in that 23 car running second. They told him two laps ago, give me 19 more. So he will split okay. this stage in half, doing a one-stop race, 75 laps, or one-stop stage, 75, and then 75. Wow. Well, now, now these cars passing Kyle Larson are not for position. They are unlapping themselves after making green flag stops. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, man. Well, getting getting into turn three and you have all these different speeds of all the cars. Bubba Wallace kind of holding that group up with all these guys coming through. But getting into three, you have that crown in the racetrack and it's flat right there. And it's really easy to lock up that left front tire. But thing I want to talk about, Clint, and we saw this uh, the opposite with Martin Truex when he got behind Kyle Larson, he lost a bunch of time and couldn't go anywhere. And it, it works both ways with the slow cars and the fast cars. It all depends on how you catch that traffic. Well, I think it's important. I mean, obviously, you see it on the pylon there, but Larson's not the only one in this. Bubba Wallace, we just covered it. His teammate Bowman, Gillen, Suarez, Truex. It's the first car is actually on the, the strategy, the other strategy. So seven cars have not made this stop. Larson, Wallace, Bowman, Gillen, the first four, plus Suarez and Haley, sixth and seventh, and Ty Dillon one lap down. And sometimes you do all this strategy and it, you, you come back out on, out on the racetrack, the guy who only pits once and the guy who pit twice, they wind up just right in the same spot. So you just, you never know where it's all going to fall until it all plays out. Well, you'd have known if that caution would have came out right there with so far into the side of Burton, that would have been big. All right, before that group pits, we will step away with Kyle Larson leading Bubba Wallace by five seconds after 138 laps at Richmond. Next Sunday, the NASCAR Cup Series moves over to FS1. We're in Martinsville for door-to-door -door action on the half-mile paperclip. Pre-race, 2 Eastern, green flag at 3 on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. 144 laps in the books, and Larson has increased his lead over Bubba Wallace by a second, but he is losing a lot of valuable time to the drivers who stopped back at lap 123-124. He is, and, and Bubba lost a lot the lap before. It all depends on, like we were talking earlier, see, he's getting out of the way. His angle's off getting in the corner, so it's all about minimizing the time lost. Bubba Wallace, I think, has had a, a couple bigger chunks of time with the way that that traffic has cycled out with the cars that he's been around and trying to get out of the way, and 
sometimes getting run into. Absolutely. I mean, the pace is already one second difference between tires and not. Then you could get held up up to another second. That's two seconds gained. Way too much time. Have to be careful. Time those passes. And for me, I always wanted to be on the Martin Truex Jr. strategy. Put the tires on my car and just let me be on offense, go forward. I hated when the whole, when they would put me out there and leave me on the other strategy and I'm in the way. I just felt like I lost more time and it, it definitely wasn't as much fun. Well, from here, in this vantage point, being a fan, I love it. I love both aspects of that the strategy game. See how it plays out. Fifth place, Josh Berry. On newer tires, Todd Gilliland has not made his green flag stop yet. He's sixth. But Truex made his stop, got back on the lead lap. So did Josh Berry, Logano, Bell, Busher, Kozlowski. Uh, one lap down. First car one lap down is Kozlowski. There's your Hunt Brothers Pizza Cam on board uh, Joey Logano. Looking ahead at Todd Gilliland. Chevy in positions one and three. Toyota second and fourth. Fords four through seven with four of them in the top ten. On board with Brad Kozlowski and the BuildSubmarines.com in-car camera. Uh, Brad, somebody that we thought would be right in the middle of, of everything that we did here tonight based on how he performed here last year. Yeah, I think he's holding suit to that for sure. Brad Kozlowski marched right up through the field. Yeah, and he started deep in the field, uh, only ran one lap in qualifying, and that came back. Here comes Larson, pit road. Suarez and Larson in for their green flag stop. And Bubba Wallace will take over the lead. Here's Regan. Mike Kyle Larson's been very quiet on the radio. Hasn't said a word this entire run, but has been getting coached up the entire time by Cliff Daniels on where he needed to be lap time wise. They continue to tell him you're doing exactly what you need to do. He was managing lap time as he ran. Jamie. And Todd Gilliland having a great night. Started sixth, his second best of the year. Tight through the center, free up, but he kept it in the top five for most of this race, Regan. Bubba Wallace, this run has been too free into the corners, too tight center. We saw him lose a few spots early on, and that was his biggest complaint. Ty Dillon, Todd Gilliland have made their stop, so only Alex Bowman is on the racetrack, and here he comes to pit road, having not been there since lap uh, 74, he and Justin Haley. Martin, well, Martin Truex Jr. cycles back to the lead. Now, when all this started, he was six tenths of a second back Truex was to Kyle Larson when pit stops began. Well now it's going to flop now uh, Martin Truex is going to be running slower and Larson is going to is going to run this run out what we believe all the way all the way to the end and we see Alex Bowman on pit road with pit crew hopping around with some trouble Regan. Well you guys saw right there a little bit of trouble with the right rear the Jackman actually had to go back to the other side that'll cost him some time for Alex Bowman. Justin Haley the final car to pit in this green flag sequence. Well you said it'll flop Kevin I heard you were talking about Larson and Truex right there will for now. The problem is we've got 75 to go in this stage it's going to be a while before we figure out which one of these scenarios work the best. And those two cars are going to be able to show it. That's where you're going to see it. Who played the cards right. So Larry tells us it won't be but 15 or 20 laps from now when that group that broke this stage into thirds will be back to pit road and then we'll see how it cycles out for the run to the end of the stage. That's one thing I love about Richmond you have all these different pit strategies and uh, a lot of it sometimes flops because of how your car is handling and things that happen on the racetrack tonight we started in the rain you can push your slick tires a little bit further with the strategy and, and, and have an extra set at the end so it's uh, it's all playing out Larry we saw that Chris Gabehart the 11 car changed that strategy a couple years ago won this race and really kind of changed Richmond from then on. Yeah, he actually did a one stop in one stage and two stops in the other and that kind of started the trend going. 
So Martin Truex Jr. in front of Josh Berry, Joey Logano, Christopher Bell, and Chris Buescher, all of whom were on pit road between lap 123 and 127. Gilliland with a little bit of a scrape there prior to his pit stop. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank and by Toyota. Let's go places. 165 laps complete. Martin Truex, your leader by six seconds over Josh Berry. They'll still have a pit stop to make before the end of this stage. Here's a bit of Fox Radio Remix beginning with Alex Bowman. Straight and smooth here. Those lumps are good. No clue where these tires are going. So just take care of your stuff. Just remember, it'll be a massive change in grip level between those tires and the off and these. It's just a lot harder. Just remember, with these tires, you're probably going to feel like you've got quite a bit less grip than those reins. So the first six drivers have a pit stop to make. Coming up in the not too distant future, Kyle Larson, who's on that one stop strategy for stage two, he is in seventh place. And only Bubba Wallace back in 16th, now one lap down on that same strategy. Everybody else still has a pit stop coming, and that will jumble the field here before we get to the end of stage two at 230 laps. Well, there's a lot to that where they came in b before the pit and, and where they're currently running. So it's uh, it's definitely a, a cycle of strategies and, and everything to to go through as to as to which strategy you're on. But we know one thing, this five car is fast and he could probably be on either strategy. Well, I think that's the key. Just don't beat yourself, right? Don't put yourself in a, a situation where it can, you know, take that out of our control. But I think that the pace is there. Certainly Cliff Daniels thought the pace was there. Caution. Tell you what's there is a caution. Caution at lap 170, and this is the third caution of the night. Quick. And Kyle Bush bounced off the wall. We're waiting on word from NASCAR, but that may be the reason for the caution. 
way up out of the groove. You see him heading north. Man, it's almost like a, a brake issue or maybe a right front down, Kevin. Yeah, the car definitely went straight. And, and not a right front. Oh, it's definitely not down. Well, it was one thing's for sure. The day wasn't going very good, and the night is getting worse. Kyle Larson, or excuse me, Kyle Busch. Now Bubba Wallace had just passed Martin Truex to get back on the lead lap. And we'll see who ends up being the free pass car. Six time winner here at Richmond. I know he's frustrated. Eric Jones is the free pass. First car one lap down. Yeah, that didn't work out well for Kyle Larson with where this where this caution fell. He's he's running sixth right now. You see Eric Jones, he'll be your free pass. Uh, Kyle Larson uh, running sixth on his strategy, and all those guys who had already pitted before him and run, Kyle was going to keep running, and they were going to have to pit again. Now they've they've jumped him, and now they're all going to pit together because Kyle's going to have to pit with them. That's exactly right. Not exactly what Cliff Daniels needed on this one-stop uh, strategy he had going on. And you just you, you just never know. You never know when those cautions are going to fall, and you just have to you just have to. Pick a strategy, and that's that's crew chief Cliff Daniels right there, and, and the way that this works with the amount of people that you can bring, the crew chief usually has to do something, or one of the engineers, and Cliff Daniels on it. Well, I tell you, that how, is how intense he is as a crew chief, but he knows how important his pit stop is. You can get him done on pit road, easier than you do it on the racetrack. Jamie. Joey Logano comes in from third, having a great night so far. A little tight center, turns fine on throttle, gets loose off throttle. Air pressure adjustment in fourth. The 19 of Martin Truex Jr., only driver I've heard tonight who has been happy start to finish, Regan. The four car, Josh Berry, took off way too tight on that green flag after that green flag pit stop, but it got better as he ran. He liked it at the end. The 20 car of Christopher Bell is loose in and loose off of the corners. He wants an adjustment for that. Yeah, and that's not that's not abnormal. That's not abnormal to to hear the comments from Josh Berry to talk about taking taking off tight. Was there contact with Bubba Wallace right here as Truex tried to leave? Somebody's got to give. Yep. Didn't get to it in the 
pre-race, but let me tell you, Richmond has always had a great fan base. These people know how to do it. A lot of tailgating on this Easter weekend, a lot of families. That's what I like to see. Kids out here having fun. People of all ages, Richmond, a good racetrack to come tailgate. Tailgate Kings, folks. We have the best fans in the business in NASCAR. There's a Chastain fan for you. Do you have one of those watermelon hats, Kevin? I didn't. Think I so. don't. Do you have a watermelon backpack? That's not. No, my, I didn't think it's so. Not my color. Ah, there we go. That's much better. <laughs> bush light. Did you see any of those bush lights out there? I thought you gave that sport up too. Actually, I did see a lot of bush I lights. I bet you did. I saw a couple, a few cold ones, and man, it looked tasty. All right. So, there's the Ford Performance Cam on board Noah Gregson. He's up to 12th place. SHR is having a good night. They needed one. Yeah, the four's been good uh, with Josh Berry. Noah's been just right in there grinding. Well, can Kyle Larson pass some cars here? Get back up through them and put the pressure on Truex. Logano, man, talk about that. Exactly what they needed, Clint. And this is, when you come to a racetrack that you expect to run good and you perform like that, it's instant confidence. You were talking about Christopher Bell. He's part of the show now. Got back up through him. He's established in the top five, running fourth. Yeah, that's Money the highest, car might have highest he's him. been uh, Absolutely. all night. All right, penalties. Ty Gibbs and Ryan Priest, too fast entering pit road, while the 51 of Justin Haley's crew was over the wall too soon. So they will restart out back. Ready to go back to green. Truex, Logano, Barry, and Bell. Now you see Martin Truex with a huge jump on the on the restart right there. This is a Whoa, oh Ryan Blaney up way the track. up out of the groove. Oh, still getting hit. He's trying to get back down. Man, it's been a long go for Ryan Blaney so far. Now a number of drivers did not pit on that caution to get back onto the lead lap. They include. Uh, Bowman, Gilliland, Ty Dillon, Stenhouse, Burton, and Suarez. I think Bowman was the one that didn't need that caution the most. Really hurt him. Had a good car running in the top five. Untimely caution bit him. Well, we're going to see how good this five car is, Clint, being able to come through traffic and make passes. And so far, he's if he can get by Christopher Bell, I think he's uh, he wants to do this as early as possible to not lose touch with the leaders. Denny Hamlin with the thank you Toyota owners cam there with Chris, teammate Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell cut Kyle Larson some slack right there. He was sure coming he up the racetrack and lifted for him. You see Denny Hamlin you're riding around to the inside of Christopher Bell. Haven't heard much of him. Imagine that. Welcome to the show. Hometown guy. You hear that slow roll out of the throttle with Christopher Bell, and then that's probably coming from the engine shop. Hey, let's not sit on this rev limiter down the back straightaway on new tires, and you hear him roll out of the gas to stay out of the rev limiter. Watch Ryan Blaney here. Let's see what happened to him. He is still way on the outside and toward the back of the pack. Ooh, got a little contact from Austin Sindrick. I think it started at Bubba Wallace. saw the flames come out of hit his pipes, caught him off guard way early, getting into the corner, lifted, and just stacked him up behind him. Got ran over. Well, let's hear what Bubba had to say. <laughs> Don't you love it? Don't you love trying something different? You feel it all the matter. Story of our life. Yeah. Sorry, right, uh, you got mad speed. Way good shape. Oh, no doubt. You're still going to be the bad guy on Monday. <laughs> Always. Yeah, and what Bubba's talking about, he's just giving the, uh, Booty some grief about his strategy and, and it not working out. But you know what? That You just don't know when the cautions are going to fall. You just have no idea. And the crew chief says, okay, this is what looks to be the best uh, from a time standpoint. And, and when we punch the numbers in, this is how we're going to make the most ground. But Well, history. Yeah. You go back and look at history, all those guys. That has such a, a big way in that decision. And we all know. Well, that, nine times out of ten, you got long, long, long green flag runs. The other history that we don't know about is this night race, right? Absolutely. The, the pace is faster, and there's just things that are happening different. So they're still learning on the fly what the right strategy is with these lap times. 15th place, Ross Chastain against uh, Eric Jones, who just got the free pass. 
Eric has this racing to read program and uh, out here in the fan zone he read uh, an Easter Bunny book to the kids. It's been uh, doing this that. afternoon. Been doing that for quite a few years. Yeah. That's a, a good attaboy for him making a lot of difference in a lot of children's lives. Pretty cool. Make your old teacher happy right. That's right. Should be proud. She'd have been proud if you'd read anything. That's a good dig Kevin. Did they have books when you were with them glasses working? Is that is that why you have readers? Well, they just used to. We had typewriters and all <laughs> kinds of different things. <laughs> typewriters. <laughs> things get a little feisty here. Uh, Austin Dillon up there with Michael McDowell, Ryan Blaney trying to work his way back up through on the low side now. Man, did you see the right front rotor glowing on that Ryan Blaney car? Wow. Myron back in traffic. Look at that, Clint. And a lap down. Definitely. Not, go ahead. Definitely not the night that we thought we would have out of Ryan Blaney. He's he's been carrying the banner for Ford with the speed and the things on on the racetrack, and tonight has definitely not not been a great night for him. 188 complete. Martin Truex Jr. up one second on Josh Berry as we take you Fox side by side. One hundred ninety four laps complete Martin Truex now one point two ahead of Josh Berry the only driver in the top five who does not yet have a Richmond win Berry running right where he was a year and where he finished a year ago subbing for Chase Elliott. How about an Easter basket full of crank it up for this Sunday night.
halfway in the Toyota Owners 400 at Richmond. On an Easter Sunday night, Martin Truex 1.4 ahead of Josh Berry. Logano Larson 3.4 seconds back. And as we documented, before the pit stops began under green, Truex was six tenths of a second behind Kyle Larson under green. And of course, the caution flag uh, for Kyle Busch negated all of that. 30 laps to go in stage two. Here's your progressive race summary. Martin Truex, one of five leaders so far. Larson out front for 144. Truex now has led for 50 laps, second most. 10 lead changes, 23 cars on the lead lap. Kyle Larson, the stage one winner, currently three seconds out of the lead in fourth. Riding with actually the, the cause of the caution, last caution we had, Kyle Busch, which was exactly what he needed. Had a lot of cars that were a lap down when that caution came out. He was still on the lead lap. Was the caution put him? He probably gained 12 spots. Flip side of that, Alex Bowman. He was one of the good cars running up front in the top five. Got pinned a lap down. Clear back in uh, 19th place right now. Regan. You guys just showed the eight of Kyle Busch a moment ago there. A lot of optimism for them coming into the race. Felt like that car was going to be very good. Right now, the report from Kyle, though, he's so tight, he is chattering the right front tire through the corner. Not too happy with it at the moment. Yeah, we've heard Kyle talk about how tight his car is all night. And that is definitely one thing that was challenging for these teams as they practice in the middle of the day, Clint, ran, running their first race at night in this, in this next-gen car. So... Um, some guys have hit it better than others, and obviously this car of Kyle Busch, they, they started off the race way too tight, so they missed it a little bit. And you hear him say chattering. They literally, you scrub that tire too much. In other words, it's too tight, the car's sliding. When that tire slides too much, it eventually gets into a chatter, and that's exactly what it feels like. Da -da 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 -da. Not a good feeling at all, is it? No. And when it's chattering like that, and, and that's not abnormal for for here and, and Loudon and some of these flatter racetracks for the chatter uh, to happen in the middle of the corner but it's definitely not not the way that you're going to win the race. 23 to go in stage two. We'll step away for a box side by side.
17 to go in stage two. Now some of the drivers who stayed out on that last caution are now falling a lap down uh, like Ricky Stenhouse Ty Dillon Todd Gilliland and Daniel Suarez Alex Bowman who also stayed out is the last of those and he's right now the last car on the lead lap as we come toward the end of stage two Martin Truex putting Suarez one down. Bowman ahead. Well you see Suarez putting up a, as much of a fight as he can right here to, to try to keep Martin Truex from lapping another car so he wants to keep him pinned right there as long as he can. Didn't didn't take long though. The car ahead is Justin Haley and that would put him two down and Josh Berry continues to impress. He was having trouble getting around Gill and and uh, I can't see the other one Ty Dillon right there and enabled Logano and Larson to really close the gap on him in the last few laps. Well that's the ebb and flow of this particular racetrack you know you catch a guy that's running your groove and you have a ton of trouble passing him and all the guys that are right behind you catch up and then you finally clear him and you're like oh thank God. You got to think after uh, his performance here last year that that Josh Berry had this race circled on his calendar. Well Josh Berry and, and Rodney Childers are you know they, they just they needed to get they needed to get it going but I think everybody thought that they could and, and I think the, the biggest thing for them is just making it happen and tonight has been a solid run from the start to the to, to where they are right now. It's called confidence and there's only one way to get it runs like here tonight. Jamie. Yeah and another driver that really needed a solid run tonight is Joey Logano still looking for his first top five of the year and I talked to his crew chief Paul Wolf earlier and he said we had a chance to be part of that tire test in North Wilkesboro about three weeks ago and you guys know we rarely test in this sport it's basically just for tires he said we actually learned a few things that we applied to our setup work here at Richmond. He said that combined with the fact this is Joey's style of track, they were really optimistic and it's showing so far. Running third, two and a half off the lead, two and a half seconds that is. Well, when Jamie talks about not being able to test, it, that's literally the rule. You, you cannot test unless it's a NASCAR sanctioned test. And, and most of the time it's a Goodyear test where they're testing a newly paved surface like they have at North Wilkesboro. And it gives these teams that are able to go to those tests an opportunity to try things outside of just testing the tires. So um, you can only do so much on simulation and CFD and all the things that we use for tools outside of, of just going to the racetrack. And when you get those opportunities, you have to capitalize on them. And tonight we're seeing a much better 22 car in Joey Logano. And you see that four car getting bigger. The one that I thought would be able to do a little bit better and I'm sure he is thinking the same thing is our early race leader Kyle Larson hasn't been able to make much progress at all so far. Restarted well, fifth currently running fourth. Yeah and, and that's we talk about it all the time Clint and you, you want to be in control of these races and do everything you can while you have the lead but he has that number one pit stall and will be able to you know to, to utilize that as as we get to pit road so that's a good point. Been a quiet night for Denny Hamlin, the hometown hero from nearby Chesterfield. Running fifth, uh, 4.7 seconds off the lead. Restarted seventh, so picked up a couple spots. Yeah, another thing, as, you, as we look on board with, with Denny Hamlin, and look at that racetrack, Clint. All the way down in front straightaway, it's wet. Or it's damp. It, you know, it's a different color. Same thing, middle to the top of the racetrack. We, we were talking during the break. We would have been here for hours trying to dry every inch of this racetrack, and I can't uh, tell you how, how proud I am of everybody in the sport for going out tonight and, and racing in that damp racetrack. It was much damper than what we had at North Wilkesboro, and we're proving to ourselves that we can we can do that on an oval. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at it. We're just past halfway. That race is official. And back in, in the day, oh, maybe even last year, we wouldn't even have started yet. Oh, Hamlin with the Toyota owners. Thank you, Cam. I mean, and not only did we race 30 laps, but we did it incident free. And again, that's a tribute to Goodyear, to the mechanics on all these teams, and of course, to the drivers. Well, the other thing, how many, we heard all those crew chiefs warning their drivers. Now, these slicks won't have near as much grip as those <laughs> rain tires. I'd have never thought that. 
It's a crazy world we live in, Clint, but that is uh, definitely the fact. Uh, the, the rain tires, especially when the track dry, they have more grip than, than the slick tires, and, and that is a much different feel than, than what you have on the slick tires. You have that, that move around uh, with the grooves in the tread. The tire moves around a lot. The car uh, moves around a lot to, to try to gain that lateral grip, and when you put those slicks on, it feels like you're back on bricks. And, and the tires have grip, and that's just not what you what you started uh, the race with and, and being used to. Well, here's Alex Bowman, who was on the one-stop strategy for sta the 160-lap stage two, like Kyle Larson, but was a little further back on the field, stayed out under the caution, did not stop to, to get back on the lead lap. Here he falls a lap down to Martin Truex. That's a bummer for him and his team. I mean, literally a top five car. One untimely caution when Kyle Busch slid up and got into the wall. Well, only, well out. only three to go right here, Clinton. So same thing that we just talked about with the previous lap car. Alex Bowman wants to hold Martin Truex up as much as he can to not lap the guy in front of him. And if he can stay on the lead lap right here, that is such an in, uh, a impactful moment. I think he'll be fine. He'll get the free pass at the end of the stage. Yeah, keep going. You yeah. know that. Well, yeah. what, what he's saying is he won't have to start at the tail end of the longest line That's yes. for the lucky dog. So yes. he wants to not be the he wants to not be the lucky dog. He wants to be on the lead lap when he gets to the line, so he doesn't he can pit like normal and not have to start at the back. And he just might be able to do it right here. He's trying. Hold him down. Hold him tight. Final lap, stage two. Here they come to the line. Bowman with a head of steam on the outside. Ah, that was so close. I don't think Truex yeah. I He's think not. Truex was ahead of him, but barely. NASCAR will review that. He knows how strong that car is. He, he can get him a lap down. I'm going for absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yep. You want to pin him a lap down. All right, we'll sort it out when we come back. Martin Truex Jr. has his first stage win of the season and his sixth at Richmond Raceway.
Next Sunday on Fox, it's week two of the United Football League. Houston takes on D.C. Hard hitting action continuing next Sunday at 4 Eastern on Fox. Here at Richmond Raceway, we're two stages in to the Toyota Owners 400. Martin Truex Jr. picks up the stage win over Josh Berry. And how close was it with Alex Bowman? Here they are at the line. There is the photo showing that Bowman was indeed the first car one lap down, so he will get the wave around. But as Clint pointed out, have to pit with the lap down cars and start at the tail end of the field. Little cosmetic surgery to the safer barrier there as we get ready for pit stops. Between stages two and three, Martin Truex Jr. will lead them in. Here's Jamie. And Joey Logano on the radio said not too bad on the long haul, just fires off too tight and stays too tight for about 30 laps. They want to free it up just a bit. The 19 said he's still happy. Little tight firing off, so an air pressure adjustment for Martin Truex Jr. Just picked up his first stage win of the season, Regan. Josh Berry in the four car felt like he might have hurt his right rear tire just a little bit too much early in that run. Needs some right rear grip, but does not want to affect the center turn of his car. And for Kyle Larson, the only issue right now is the fact that he doesn't have the clean air. Said there was a slight balance shift because of that. Truex is going to beat Larson on pit road. Yeah, but Larson gained a couple right there. Those are very pivotal spots. Hard to come by. Number one pit stall, Kevin, you told us. Tough one for Josh Berry, who dropped four spots on pit road. Martin Truex Jr., stage winner. It says rain tires. It did say rain tires. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. That graphic said rain tires. No. Heavy rain tire, Mike. Caution at lap 17. set me up with the story was all about Joe Gibbs racing uh, and I'm going to say something to the effect of like they didn't qualify that well it was too early yeah. for them. but we see now three in the top six and the one that I had my eye on Shannon was Christopher Bell how about it? traffic at one Back here in the race day studio, Shannon and Jamie coming into this race. All the talk was about Joe Gibbs racing and its drivers currently have three in the top five. What have you seen out of that team? Yeah, well, they didn't qualify well. It was all about Hendrick Motorsports and qualifying, uh, but it's been a steady climb to the front for all those guys. And Christopher Bell is the one that I have had my eye on. Qualified all the way back in 29th, and you see it was pretty much a steady climb. The one dip you see there around lap 130 is when they broke the second stage down into two stops versus Kyle Larson uh, doing it just in one, and it paid big dividends for them. Uh, got all the way up. He's going to restart fifth right now, guys. Of course, Martin Truex Jr. out front. We'll send it back to you, Mike, for stage three. Thanks, Shannon. 238 laps complete. 
162 to go. Uh, this final stage, 10 laps longer than stage two. And the two drivers that combined have led 230 of the 239 laps are going to start 1 2. Well, there's a few things that are going to play out here. One, strategy. What, yes. What's going to be the preferred strategy? And I think uh, under, that, under that caution, uh, qualifying definitely took effect with Josh Berry's pit stall and losing a few spots. Tonight's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. 20 lead lap cars. Back to Alex Bowman, who got the free pass. Well, we get to see the five and the 19 square off right here. Mono best, mono. best two cars right up front. A good jump on Truex's behalf is going to be key. The five car, can he stay door to door with him, keep him held down? Take his exit away off of two. Well, Martin Truex saw the five car head laid back right there, and he went way late in the restart zone. And that was always a tough one for me with the wheel spin. Um, but when you're the leader, you have that choice anywhere in that box. <laughs> Chastain, every restart, he makes that melon move way up to the outside. And this time he's got a lot of company back there. Logano, Logano. coming. Yes, sir. Looking to the outside. And Hamlin. Looks like it takes a lap or so for Larson's car to come in. Well, you heard Joey Logano talk about not taking off good on the last restart. It seems like he, you know, he's in a much better position to take off a little bit better this time. But taking off here at Richmond is, is one of the toughest balances that you deal with. You, you want your car to have grip in the corner and off the corner as you see door to door here with Denny Hamlin and Joey Logano. But you want that balance to be good in the long run, as you know Richmond is going to have long runs, but you have to be able to get going to, to stay up with the leaders and, and keep your track position. So um, it's just sometimes they're tight, won't turn in the middle of the corner. That's usually usually the biggest problem. Yeah, this track is so notorious for loose in, tight in the middle, loose off. Well, Fix you, that, crew chief. You good heard, luck. You heard Denny Hamlin have to get out of the throttle right there to keep from getting into the side of Joey Logano. It's just so tough to pass off a of turn two. There's a little crown in the back straightaway, and if you cross it with any wheel in there, it just spins the back or it slides the back. Logano slid it going into turn number one after he had just almost cleared Hamlin, but almost doesn't count. See how hard those two are fighting for position. The 11 car Denny Hamlin on the inside with the rotors glowing. 12th place on the right of the screen. Gregson and Elliott. Trying to outduel one another getting into the corner. Gene can establish that position on the other guy. If you're on the outside, you're trying to take away their entrance to the corner and their exit. Moreover, the inside, you're trying to get into the corner deeper and push them up the racetrack. Well, as we're on board that monster energy camera there with Ty Gibbs, he had more trouble this week uh, on pit road with a, with a penalty. You see Chase Elliott get a little contact there with Noah, but Gibbs battling back again. We've seen him do that several weeks so far this year. Had that speeding penalty back at lap 170. Gibbs did. Yeah, and I think Noah said, OK, I, I need to get back to the bottom of the racetrack. I don't need to give up any more spots here. Protect what I have. There's a hole uh, behind before I give up another spot to Ty Gibbs. And scrubbing tire off, a tire that you'll need long into these runs. Get settled in, get single file. More than likely, you're going to see another long green flag run. A couple of youngest drivers in the field, like everyone else, chasing the oldest driver in the field, 43-year-old Martin Truex. Well, I lowered that average after uh, <laughs> that's right. out of the car. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Hurt the average up here. Thanks, Probably. Clint. Yeah. That was a low-hanging fruit. They'll complete 250 of 400 laps this time by with Martin Truex leading. And thanks to Toyota, we're going to keep it right here for commercial free racing from Richmond as we go Toyota all out.
Penny Hamlin in fourth, two seconds off the lead. Now with three of those Camrys right in a row. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Bubba Wallace has had a solid night. Got a little bit behind on the strategy as we heard him give his uh, crew chief a little bit of grief. But they, they've had a solid night. And most of these Toyotas have run up towards the front for the majority of the night. You see Ty Gibbs battling his way back to where he was running before he had the, the pit road penalty. Currently 14th, 6.8 seconds back. And here's Christopher Bell. He's uh, in the rocking chair between Hamlin and Wallace in fifth place, 2.6 seconds off the lead. Quietly, steady, but surely Denny Hamlin keeps marching its way forward inside the top five, exactly where we're accustomed to seeing him. Been a good racetrack at home, by the way, for Denny Hamlin over the years. Eric Jones got back on the lead lap with a free pass a couple of cautions ago. He's eight seconds back in 15th. Right behind Ty Gibbs. Well, this is the this is the guy that they gave control of the race to, and they have not relinquished control of that race since uh, that strategy played out in the first stage with. Martin Truex Jr. And Tyler Reddick who is in 10th place five and a half back. Toyota driver and Virginia native Denny Hamlin has been coming to Richmond Raceway since he was five years old. Denny and his mom Mary Lou look back at what this track means to their family. As soon as he saw a NASCAR race, that's what he wanted to be. I mean, I was five or six years old. I just remembered the moment I smelled the tires and the fuel and I heard the engines roaring by, I was done. Yeah, he he just asked me the other day, do you still have your season tickets on there? I sure do. I love that the Toyota Owners 400 is here at Richmond because I have been driving with Toyota now for better part of 15 years. But now the manufacturer that sponsored us is now the head sponsor here of this race in my home track. It just means a little bit more. That's Denny Hamlin who just ran his personal fastest lap of the race uh, just 14 laps ago along with uh, Christopher Bell. And Eric Jones. Well I still think a lot of these guys are still learning exactly where the racetrack is and what the speed is and um, learn more about their they're, they're having to adjust on their cars every run and the thing about Richmond is you, you don't get a lot of opportunities with the way that this strategy is to and, and the way that this race started tonight with the rain tires and the track changing it's hard to keep up with your car on nights like this to be able to make good adjustments and, and have it work the next run with with everything changing so much. Well Larry Mack what can we expect we saw different strategies play out in stage two what can we expect for this run to the checkers. Yeah, Mike, and, and right now everybody should have somewhere around three to four sets of stickers left, so I don't know that that's a storyline. We go back racing at lap 240, which is 60 to go. If you're going to just split the stage in half, you're going to split, split pit somewhere around lap 315 to 320. If you're going to split it in the thirds, the next pit stop will come somewhere around lap 285 to 290, and then again with 60 to go. So. I still think we might see some split strategies, but the one thing about the final stage, it has to be right. You don't get a second chance. <laughs> well, we'll wait and see. Well, we, we, we saw what Kyle Larson did early, and obviously they think their car is good enough to, to run that, that strategy that they did in the first stage with the with the less stop, but caution bit him. The caution so now what do you do? I think yeah. I, I'm going to play it safe. I think our car is fast enough. We have that number one box. If we could just get an opportunity to let the guys do work in this pit stop, maybe that could be the difference. Jamie? How about Tyler Reddick, Mike? He's found himself in the top 10 right now, starting 19. Just had a hard time making up ground. He talked about that great shake they had since they unloaded yesterday. He said the biggest problem right now is he's just too tight. They've made some gains on it, but hopefully he can keep it here. Mike, he's never finished in the top 10 at Richmond. Thanks, Jamie. 
Well, if I was too tight, I'd reach down and start grabbing that gear lever more. Um, I think that that's a good option. We see Christopher Bell underneath Denny Hamlin, but the, the thing that I'm talking about with Tyler Reddick, as we see these two continue to race, his, he talks about his car being tight, but I don't see him reaching down to downshift. So tough to understand all the scenarios there with everything that they have going on, but uh, it would definitely help it rotate. Helps it slow down. And they've kind of stuck with that strategy all weekend of, of not shifting. See, Bell is moving forward. He's come a long ways. It's been a wild race for him, but getting where he wants to be. Yeah, you see Denny Hamlin get that great run off the off the second lane of the racetrack, and a lot of times you see him go back to the bottom, and now Bell's going to try the, the hash marks there. The paint on the racetrack gets rubbered up, and it's actually going to get him position on the outside of Denny Hamlin and get that good run up <laughs> off the corner. I think Denny finally caved. He was door to door with him on the bottom for several laps. Come on, man. Got to his outside. All right. It's yours. Go ahead. Yep. All right. We're listening on Ty Gibbs. Be smarter than him. He got himself dumped earlier by doing the same dumb. So don't worry about it. Yeah, tell him I know about four of them, so they're going to come something. You and the whole field. Don't back in and go do what we're doing here. We're not racing him for anything. Obviously not liking the way Suarez is racing him there in front of him. Oh. Ooh. Obviously got moved from the rear. It was definitely Suarez repaved a little bit of the favor, and then here a spotter remind him. Keep your eye on the big picture. Suarez trying to stay in the free pass position. He's the first car one lap down. Yeah, and that's a tough spot to be in when you're trying to stay in that free pass position, especially when you're, you know, racing somebody that you think you're faster than. But he definitely, definitely used the bumper, and you saw Ty go back, back to his bumper and hit him. You just got to be careful with that because the last thing you want to do is you is get that splitter separated from the nose. And as temperamental as this racetrack is. Uh, with, with the handling of the car and a turn to the center. If you get that splitter separated from the bottom of the nose, it will make the front end of the car not turn as good and make your make your night even worse. So you got to be careful. So 131 laps to go, Larry Mack. Yeah, Mike, Kevin and Clint was talking about shifting, especially if maybe it would help to handle in your race car. And I've been watching the top two, Martin Trex Jr. in the 19, Kyle Larson in the five, pretty much ever since the restart about 30 laps to go Kyle Larson does not shift he stays in fifth gear the whole time Truex pretty much downshifts into fourth getting into turn one and grabs fifth up the front straight away and now as I said that that lap right there Larson did shift that's the first time since the restart that takes me back to hearing you yesterday in practice you said that the five car Kyle Larson guys I don't know he changes his gear selection every single lap from lap to lap what he does well it, searching man you're searching yeah that's exactly right you're searching to find what is going to work for your car and uh, we see Kyle Larson start to lose a little bit of distance to Martin Truex Jr. but I I just you know, with, with everything that, that you have going on at this particular racetrack, I just think you want to downshift in order to help the car turn so you're not so hard on that right front tire. 128 laps to go in Richmond. One stop or two? That is the question. Martin Truex leading as we take you Fox side by side.
120 laps to go. Uh, time for tonight's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Let me see, who is Clint picking tonight? I, 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 I can't imagine. I'm staying on the horse, boys. Come with the one that brought you. I'm telling you, Kyle Larson, he lost it on the strategy. We still have strategy coming. I think that number one pit stall may play a role in this before it's all said and done. I know which one you're going after. Well, you've got the number one pit stall. I've got the number one driver on the <laughs> racetrack currently, and that's Martin Truex Jr. They've given him control of the race, and he has maintained control of the race uh, up until this point. So we'll have to see how all this plays out. Well, you guys have the Quinella, but I've got an eye on Joey Logano. This is the most laps that Logano has run in the top five positions since he last won a race, which was Atlanta a year ago. Those are your Credit One Bank ones to watch. You do realize we took the top three cars. I mean, can well, it get any more obvious? It's than the that? blind obvious. That's pretty it? brutal. Do you want to be a winner or do we, you want to be a loser? Well, I can tell you. The four car has been one to watch. Bubba Wallace is back. William Byron, haven't heard anything of him. He's back in the top 10. There's some guys that could be a role in this before it's all said and done. That car right there, Christopher Bell. All right, we had some radio chatter from Kyle Larson. They're going with the uh, the Paul Revere option for pit stops. One if by land, two if by sea. What? That's I'm a long fellow. The ballot. Listen, my children, and you shall hear the ballad of Paul Rube. Never mind. Um, the code word was Boston. <laughs> what year for was that? Boston for uh, Kyle Larson. Okay. He did go to a bunch of museums yesterday. I think he was trying to. He had a flashback of his museum visit. Cool. A lot of museum history here in Richmond. There is. Uh-oh. Whoa. Lap, Whoa. Lap, Whoa. Split him. Yeah, the lap car. Is going to decide, uh, well, get in the way of this battle. It's not going to decide it because Christopher Bell fought back three wide. Bell trying to take third away from Logano as Brad Keselowski pits. Still with you. Still there. Chase Briscoe to pit road, giving up a top uh, 16 spot, and now there's about five more. Coming in in quick succession. Well, one car has to start that cycle, and as soon as it starts, you know you have to come with him, like I said earlier, just in order to keep up. So we see a bunch of them coming now. Byron, Busher, Elliott, Gregson, all on pit road. Your leader, Truex, just come on. Here comes Larson. Here comes the rest of them. They're all coming. <laughs> Jamie. Martin Truex Jr. making his way down. They've been happy with that race car all night long. Four tires for him. As you see it right there, they catch that tire. The 22, Joey Logano just came to a stop in his box. Air pressure adjustment, four tires, Regan. Denny Hamlin in the 11 car. Just feels like he has to slow down the center too much. Can't roll speed through the middle of the corner, so he wants some help with that. In the five car, Kyle Larson, relatively quiet on the radio. They've just been updating him on when he moves around and changes things on the track. What's going on? All right, now Bubba Wallace gives up second place to pit. Regan. Bubba Wallace struggling with brake shake has been the biggest complaint, but he continues to climb back through the pack after getting caught with strategy earlier. They weren't going to let that happen again this time. Pitted twice, or the plan is to pit twice in this sequence. That leaves Christopher Bell out on the racetrack along with Suarez, Blaney, and Sindrick. The three of those cars a lap down. Chastain finishing up, so Bell is the leader. And here's some audio from the 20. Really good work. We need just a few more. It's our best chance to win. Well, that's what you want to hear. Whether it's right or wrong, we don't know yet, but that's what you want to hear on the radio. Well, I here think, he comes. Yes. But there I think it was those those oh, yes. cars came a, a couple laps earlier. No, he's going to stay on the racetrack. Yeah. yeah, Alex Bowman was on the outside, and this is what we were talking about earlier. He was moving out of the way to let the faster cars go by on the outside so that he didn't lose as much time as possible. So he's in the he's in the game of having to get out of the way of all the faster cars that are going around him. So uh, now it's just about minimizing the lap time loss on the racetrack when those when those cars catch him. Oh, Martin Truex into the back of Chase Briscoe. Larry, the question's going to be, are they going to stay out? Did he mean this is the strategy that's going to be the win? Is Christopher Bell's team going to stay out and try to do a one-stop strategy or just stretch this a little bit longer? What do you think? 
Well, if they're going to do the one-stop strategy, Clint, they've got to probably go about another 20 laps. But if they want to split it perfectly into thirds, then the next lap or two would be the same amount of laps each of the three runs. Well, right now... Probably falls more in line with what that crew chief was telling him. And they told him, just give me yes. a couple more. So that is the apparently the strategy. There he is. Austin Sindrick on pit road. Uh, Harrison Burton in. And obviously Christopher Bell pitting right here. Yep. And here's Bell. Regan. Christopher Bell hitting pit road right now. They had a lengthy conversation under the previous yellow about when to make this stop. Crew Chief Adam Stevens said he did not want to do it too soon because he'd pay the price on the backside of the run. As for the car right now, just a little bit too loose for Christopher Bell. Well, we see the, the battle for the lead heating up, and I, I think I think they, they think that they can make the passes on the backside of the run is the only thing that I can figure out out of that, trying to gain some advantage on the on the backside of the run. And, and that's what he did last week. Yeah. He gained a whole bunch on the on the backside of the run at, at Coda, but it, Come we'll see, see if that works out. But the, the race for the lead has heated up because Martin Truex is stuck behind Chase Briscoe, and that's allowed Kyle Larson to creep right in on the, on the backside uh, bumper of, of Martin Truex Jr. And Bell comes back out in ninth place. And, and Denny Hamlin has caught both of them. New sheriff in town. I'm here, boys. A lot of traffic ahead. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of lap traffic. Oh, Christopher oh. Bell, too fast exiting pit road. Well, we talked earlier, Clint, minimize the mistakes. This is a very difficult pit road. It's very easy to get too much, be too low in the corners or whatever that that may be, but it has bit Christopher Bell in a big way. This is a bad place to have a mistake this late in a race. Hard to overcome without a caution, some sort of help. Well, he's 10 seconds behind the leader now, and after he makes that penalty drive at 45 miles an hour down pit road, uh, he'll lose he'll lose a lap. Tenth place, Tyler Reddick, Chase Elliott. Elliott started on the outside pole and uh, has been in the top ten most of the night. Noah Gregson continues to have a good night in twelfth place. Uh, behind him, Josh Berry, who had a 15-second stop. Uh, and lost six positions on his pit stop. Keeps marching his way the wrong direction. Yep. Go back to 13th. He was all the way up to second at one time. Well, it doesn't appear like there's a, a lot that can happen on, on a green flag pit stop, but there is a ton <laughs> of things that can change because when you fire off on a caution and the track's clean and, and everything's cooled, cooled down a little bit, uh, it's much different than when you fire off on a green flag pit stop. And we heard some of the, the teams reference it earlier about how much tighter their cars were taking off. Well, when they take off uh, and won't turn uh, with the front end like you wanted to, it changes the balance of the whole run. So that's what you're that's what you don't know is going to happen during those green flag pit stops. And I think we've seen some of that happen with uh, Kyle Larson creeping in on on Martin Truex. So here's Bell to serve his penalty. That's a killer. Yes. Did you have him as one of your favorites? It's not Just talk, Clint. Let's pay attention to the race. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you see, here comes night. Truex, you see in the upper part of your screen, and he's going to put Christopher Bell a lap down. It'll be clear right there, clear right there. So instead of a contender, Bell is now one of 12 cars one lap down and as a driver there, there's just not a worse feeling when you have a car that you feel like can win the race and they come on the radio and they say we got a pit you got a penalty and, and you feel you feel terrible you, you try to do all you can do and and it, there's just not a not a worse feeling well now and it's it's not like he has any better tires because of his pit now he's got to go out and pass those three cars to even get back on the lead lap those three cars being the leaders well, the biggest thing he needs to do is is just maintain with the leader to, to try to keep up with the cars that they're lapping to, to try to stay in the lucky dog position. 
You saw Ty Gibbs pass Noah Gregson. That is a change of 12th place. Eighteen cars on the lead lap now with Christopher Bell in the free pass position. And Martin Truex Jr. In the last eight races where he's led more than 100 laps and he has led 144 tonight. Uh, he's won two of them. On the other hand Kyle Larson has never lost here after leading more than 50 laps. Well guys we talked about. Christopher Bell pitting later and that's going to pay off for him right now to get this lap back. He's going to get his lap back by himself because of those fresher tires. And that's what what they were talking about on the radio was hey we need to wait long enough to gain an advantage and that's how you pass here is to have some sort of advantage and you see that unfortunately it's not for the lead. Yeah. It's, but he was hoping to, to close that gap up on the leaders not just to get his lap back like you're saying. Larry the way this is playing out what do you think of that call by the 20. Well, I think it's he told him he said this is the only way we could possibly win this race because I don't think they got a good car. I just don't know if they had as good a car as the 19 or the five. So you do something a little bit different. Yeah, and, it, and it's a right now it's a six, seven, tenth a lap strategy lap time difference. So, you know, there's just certain parts of the run that you can gain time and some runs you can gain more time. So the way that they're calculating their strategy, they, they thought that was the best way to do it do it because I promise you there was a calculation that went into whatever that strategy was uh, from a from a lap time standpoint. But there was only one calculation that didn't go into that equation. Don't well that, beat yourself. Do not get caught speeding on pit road. Yeah and that calculation was correct. Most likely it was the driver doing it was obviously the driver yeah. doing something wrong. Front four evenly spaced about three car lengths between each of the front four positions. Truex Larson Hamlin and you're riding with Logano in fourth. Bubba Wallace in fifth he's three seconds back. Ninth and tenth Elliott and Barry. Again Josh Barry having to overcome uh, a speeding penalty as well. Larry Mack. You know on the on the flip side of what Christopher Bell and Adam Stevens did Brad Keselowski Matt McCall you're riding with him in the six car he's in seventh. He was really one of the first leaders to hit pit road. Now if you've got a good long run car car you can make this pay off but sometimes you'll pay the price deep into the run by coming too early. Both the RFK Fords in the top ten Keselowski seventh Chris Buescher eighth. Uh, one thing to go back on there Mike Josh Berry had a bad pit stop did not have a penalty he's still oh. he's still running running 10th there but you're just, right. a, just a small uh, with just something to just step back and correct there but these guys have been Keselowski and Busher have been somebody that we had on our list to have a good night tonight they've notoriously been very good here uh, on the long run so that goes right with what Larry's saying on the long run of Keselowski you're right thank you 300th career cup start for uh, Chris Busher. And Clint the very first to win his 300th start in the history of NASCAR. He drove the number 11 he won two championships he's in the Hall of Fame. He's from Conover North Carolina and his son's in the Hall of Fame with him. Look Ned that. Jarrett did it. How about Rusty Wallace that. Casey Kane they all won their 300th start. As did these drivers. Bush Hamlin Logano Keselowski. Wow. Just something about 300. See that. Fire suit difference between Ned Jarrett and those guys. Well, see, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about the fire suit right there. I'm, I was thinking to myself, I wonder where Clint finished in his 300 start. Did I even make it to 300? <laughs> <laughs> I can promise you, I don't remember. We'll put our best man on it. Uh, Daniel Suarez is on pit road, and so is Austin Dillon. They were all among the one-lap down cars. Well, we see. Uh, the Hunt Brothers Pizza onboard camera here with Joey Logano. This is exactly what they needed. They needed a night where they ran in the top five. We've covered it the whole race, and and they've definitely answered some questions about where they were uh, from a performance side of things. And they talk about that North Wilkesboro test and and the things that they've learned. So definitely paying off on the racetrack. How about the diamond that he 
Yeah, down in one and two, look at him diamond moving around a little bit, trying to find that low and straight up off the corner. It worked in one and two, not so much in three and four. Yeah, and, and, and what that does is just let you drive it in straight and use the center of the corner up the racetrack and try to get that drive straight up off the corner to keep the wheels from spinning in the back. Carson Hosevar completes a pit stop. We have 83 laps to go in Richmond. Martin Truex leading Kyle Larson by half a second. We'll take you Fox side by side. Victory at Richmond for Clint Boyer and Kevin Harvick. I sure hope one of those is my 300. Maybe it wasn't. I well, the list, so I know it wasn't. I hate to tell you, but your 300 start was at Kansas Speedway. Oh, enough said. <laughs> I know. I can tell you this. It was definitely not a win. No, you finished 23rd. Jeff Gordon beat Kevin Harvick for the win. Oh. 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 <laughs> I have never been a bigger fan of Jeff Gordon than right there, right then. You know what's funny about Jeff Gordon winning at Kansas Speedway? The very first race there I was at when they built Kansas Speedway, Jeff Gordon. I don't think there's the anything race. funny about that. Oh, it was fantastic. I remember it vividly now. Passed you, Are you on sure? the outside, rolled around you like you was tied to a tree. So did you did you have like a hometown fog on no, race day? I just saw it <laughs> from behind. <laughs> I never got around that place. You know, we're sitting here looking at Denny Hamlin running well at his home track. I was always so jealous of him coming home to Richmond and being able to be so good here, leading laps, winning, winning races, obviously. This was a good track for me, but boy, my home race was definitely not the case. Yeah, and same for me. I, I, I struggled at, I didn't struggle at California Speedway, but I never could put that whole race together, and we finally, we finally did it. Uh, one time uh, beating Jimmy Johnson there and that was in a cool finish, but uh, never as much as I would have liked to. I still think I won a, a race at Kansas, though. I've never, ever said that I had one stolen from me. But when Greg Biffle run out of gas and turned off into the grass, that's an asterisk beside his win. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> all right. 72 laps to go here in Richmond. Martin Truex. And Kyle Larson, that gap is holding very steady at half to six tenths of a second. Hamlin third, Logano fourth. 
And Larry with one more pit stop in the offing when do we expect it. Yeah Mike I think the magic number is anywhere from lap 335 to 340 which is only about six to ten laps from now but will somebody jump in there a little early try to get advantage of those fresh tires like we spoke about Brad Keselowski on that last round of green flag stops. Well you've got 17 cars on the lead lap back to Alex Bowman. Chase Briscoe in the free pass position ahead of Kyle Busch and Ryan Blaney rounding out the top 20. That's what I love about this though or push it later like we saw with Christopher Bell. I think that strategy would have worked because he passed those cars because of the laps. You covered that Kevin but he made a mistake. Yeah. I think you're going to see both sides of that. It's somebody hitting it on a number, somebody being early, and somebody being late. Well, one of those is going to work. Here's a here's a car with William Byron. We, we saw struggle, and and now he's he's uh, he's running six. So that's typical for that 24 to figure it out. Brad Keselowski in seventh was the first of the cars on the lead lap to pit in the last uh, green flag cycle. Yeah, and his lap times are still good. So no oh. no no alarms going off for for Brad. So here's Reddick and Briscoe on pit road and it begins. Starting to run your leader down. He's trying as hard as he can, and I think the the big reason is obvious, the obvious. But when as soon as they pit right here, the closer you are to him, capitalizing on that number one stall, that it's going to be your saving grace possibly. Here comes William Byron. Well, the the first stall is definitely not going to be as as big of a gain uh, under Green, but it's definitely definitely been good for him on pit road. Byron Keslowski. Are both on pit road. Chase Elliott is in. Regan. William Byron continues to battle back after overshooting the pit stall a little bit earlier on. Right now, he just needs some more overall grip. They've been working on that car all night long. Keeps getting a little bit better each stop. Four missed right there, Kevin. Yeah, the, the, the four car, Josh Berry, just blew pit road, smoking the left front tire. Keeps getting worse for them, making mistakes. And this is game. That's what we've been talking about. Here comes Martin. Larson right on his tail and Logano and, this and is, Wallace. This is what what makes or break the, r yes, the race right here. This pit stop getting on and off pit road. Jamie. And the 19 of Martin Truex Jr. and Joey Logano both in their pit boxes. Martin happy as he has been all race long. Joey Logano firing off a little too tight. Another air pressure adjustment. Regan. Bubba Wallace looking for his first career top 10 at, uh, at Richmond. Right now, there's no more comments on the brake shake. He's been very focused, and the five of Kyle Larson has not said a word since the caution way back at the end of the last stage. He's zoned in right now. So Denny Hamlin leads for the first time today with just 63 laps to go. Look at this, boys. Kyle Larson got him in the pits. That's exactly what we were talking about there. I don't know how it happened. We're going to have to go back and dissect it, but he darn sure got him beat in the pits. Well, we saw him huge. We saw them come on the pit road together, and that gap had to happen in the pit stall. Look at them boys. With Pumped those up. guys changing those tires and putting that fuel in the car. So Now, for the moment, those two are the first cars one lap down, with Denny Hamlin the leader and uh, Christopher Bell well, being the only cars on the lead lap to yeah. recycle through. Can he hold him off? Look at, looking to the inside in the wet. Martin Truex he's knows there. he has to pounce while he can. Larson's trying to hold him. To, oh, he's got him. Holding tight on the outside. Larson's car just hasn't been able to take off early in the run. Oh, he's trying to clean the tires back up, isn't he? Well, and it looked like it got on the ground right there. But Martin Truex knew that he had to go while he had the, the advantage on Kyle Larson because that evens out as the, as the run goes on. That's a flex. Drove right back by him. Larson's pit stop eight tenths of a second faster. But Truex takes it back. Here's the race off pit road. Down around the corner from. Where we are on the front straightaway. Oh. Pushed him out. Truex had to lift. I don't necessarily think he had him beat. He crowded him. Well you got to do what you got to do to put yourself in position to win and Kyle Larson knew that 
he had an opportunity to put Martin Truex in a bad spot right there and he did. Just Pardon. couldn't couldn't get couldn't get taken off like he needed to on this on the fire off out of the pits. So here's Truex getting back on the lead lap from Hamlin. And Larson following through. So this is seems very similar to what Christopher Bell did last time waiting to pit. Wouldn't be the last time or the first time excuse me Larry that we've seen Chris Gabehart do something different to go try to win this race. In, in what he'll do he'll get advantage of those tires near the end of this race saw the exact same thing in the July race came up just a little short in winning. It's all going to come down to how much time he loses like we've talked the whole race when all these fast guys are going by him. We saw this whole strategy being worked out by, by Christopher Bell the last run and he made the mistake on pit road with the speeding penalty so a lot of pressure on Denny Hamlin and his whole crew as they come down to make this last pit stop and these last several laps that he has to run uh, to maximize the time lost. Not lost. Sorry. So Larry to have that advantage of those tires late in a run. How long can you wait before you make this final stop. Well, Never right mind. now. How about now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Asked and answered right there. Regan. Well, Danny Hamlin and Chris Gabehart never afraid to try different strategies and different things. No different tonight. Right now, the drive on the race car started off very good on that last run, but started to fade off too much for him at the end, meaning he was spinning the rear tires. Harrison Burton, Justin Haley, and Corey LaJoy also on pit road. So Christopher Bell cycles through to the lead. 46 laps on his tires. I think he's just he's talking about Bell. Well, never mind. He's going to pit right here. I was thinking maybe he stays long and give luck a chance to operate, but not the case. Well, you got to remember, Clint. He's I mean, he's still several laps further than, than Truex and Larson. Uh, uh, Denny Hamlin ran a little extra long. I mean, I know it's only a handful of laps, but it seemed to make a big, pretty big difference the last time when he got his lap back. It's just digging himself out of that hole, though, that yeah. very hole that you're talking about. So he'll have 11 lap fresher tires with 53 laps to run. So 18, make that 17 cars on the lead lap as we cycle through uh, this final group of pit stops. Let's find out what's new on uh, Kevin Harvick's podcast. I remember one day we had a we had a Looney Tunes promotion and we were it was myself, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, and I don't remember who else it was, but we were racing golf carts on pit road, okay. and we probably have the footage of this somewhere <laughs> here at Fox. But um, we were racing golf carts, and I'll never forget it because racing, racing, racing. Whoop, Jeff Gordon out the other side of the golf cart. <laughs> dude, dude fell out the out the out the right side of the golf cart. Yeah, and and we have that footage. Were you were you there that we day? We used it against him. My first year in the booth with Jeff Gordon. You remember that, Mike? Oh yes. He literally threw himself off of his own golf cart. Watch this. Oh, <laughs> Bugs, Bugs, old Bugs, Bugs come off a of two by himself. <laughs> Bugs has got no driver. <laughs> by the way, speaking of your podcast, which uh, fresh episodes Tuesdays and oh. Thursdays, there's Mamba Smith doing driver introductions in the bunny suit because he lost a bet with you. Yeah, and I bought that off of Amazon. Apparently, I bought the saddest looking bunny you could possibly buy. You did. That was a terrible bunny suit, but he wore it. The, the bet was if the tweet or whatever they call it on X these days. If it got 600 retweets, Mamba would have to wear the bunny suit. Yeah, you set the bar pretty low. Yeah, well, he set the bar low. Okay. I, I, I ordered the bunny suit before I walked out of the studio. I'm like, wow, that was, <laughs> that was a really dumb bet. <laughs> Jamie. 
once Martin Truex Jr. made that last stop, he got out on the track and said, all right, guys, how hard do I need to go? Let me know. And they said, be nice and smooth. And a couple seconds later, he came back on the radio frustrated with the guys around him, said that they're intentionally holding him up. His sights are set on getting this win tonight. Mike, he's now crossed over 1,500 laps led at Richmond Raceway. Wow. We talked, 40. Yeah, we talked uh, at the beginning of the night that this was a Martin Truex style of race. Yep. Uh, Ryan Blaney made a pit stop while we were talking about the podcast and got back out. So remember this earlier with Alex Bowman. Well, that was a that was a bunch of hey, I'm here. I, I, I need to get by. And we saw the race back at the end of the stage trying to keep him a lap down and, and that that was that was what you're supposed to do. Yep. Uh, you you, you got to try to keep him a lap down because that's one less guy you got to deal with. And to Jamie's comment throughout his career Martin has always been one of the most vocal on the radio to his spotter when there's somebody in front of him that's not going as fast as him. What's it like to race him. I, I always raced well with with Martin and he was always a you know a very fair racer if you raced him hard he was going to race you hard and and very much so. you know I, I think when when I listen to him on the radio now I look at him I'm like is that <laughs> is that really the same guy that I know but <laughs> most of us lose our minds in a race car and we've become this totally different person I would be on that list yeah there's two of them right there it's a it's Truex a thing. And, I always call it a pop off valve that little Push the talk button on there. Boy, Ricky Stenhouse about lost it up in turn two. Thought we were going to have a caution right there, but he gathered it back in. He was way up in the marbles. I got it straightened out. Bubba Wallace goes by. Well, there are definitely some marbles, uh, you know, out of that that two and a half lanes up the racetrack, and you know, a lot of times you'll you'll start looking around and. You'll get up there and realize really quickly that it's pretty dirty. So here's Denny Hamlin now in fifth place, 7.3 seconds back. I like it, bud. Long way to go. A lot of discipline. Let's go. Copy. Yes, sir. This is a strategy. He's a lot faster than them, but there's a lot of, a lot of track to gain here. He has nine lap fresher tires than the cars in front of him and was three and a half tenths quicker than Truex that last lap. One thing that becomes harder and harder for the leaders to do as is, is get through lap traffic and that will be one advantage that Denny Hamlin has over a lot of these lap cars is he'll be able to maneuver a little bit quickly and I think that's definitely what they're banking on. Watching the battle here with Logano really heating up with Larson Larson's car is just not as good this run. He's having trouble with the grip in his car. Logano's a little bit faster than him actually holding him up. Yeah, and that's what we talked about earlier, Clint. You just never know what you're going to get when you put another set of tires on and where the racetrack is and you fire back off and it looks tight. Yeah, that's usually what happens. It gets tighter as, as you go through these green flag runs. Yeah, I see Austin Sindrick come see up. How much he has to slow the car down yeah. and they catch him getting in. Well and he's and he's behind the lap car in front of him and that's what I was just touching on with the 11 was he'll he'll be able to maneuver um, better than some of these guys through traffic. How about Kyle Larson two and a half seconds back we listened in. That 22 is in fourth here on the two accelerating better off the corner still clear by half now by one. Please just stop telling me fourth here it's not working for me. Yeah and. That's that's the that's the era that we live in. The, the crew chief and the engineers are going to tell you what the other guys are doing. And when you're frustrated inside the car and your car's not handling as well as it did the run before, or something's not going the same way, it frustrates you because you go try what they're telling you to do and it doesn't help you. And and then you get mad like, hey, that didn't work either. So just leave me alone. Yeah, stop harp harping on me here. Let me do my job. And I tell this to Keelan all the time. In in today's form of racing, you better be. You better have thick skin because you're going to get harped on a lot uh, to, to be able to to get better. And those guys have so much data. They tell you they tell you what what you're doing wrong.
All right, 35 laps to go. We had to bring one of the real experts uh, oh. uh, to the booth. <laughs> Keelan Harvick. See, this is what we should do to Clint. We should not give him a microphone. See, right now we can, we, we can say anything that we want to you. Lord Keelan. knows you have to listen to him enough. Yeah, we had uh, we had. Where's your bunny suit? We had you in a we had you in a bunny suit earlier in, in the TV compound. He quickly realized that Michael Waltrip was going to set him up on pit road. We oh, had yes. this great plan that he was going to go on the grid walk with Michael in the bunny suit. You chose right. You chose yeah. right, Keelan. Look at this. Second place. Here comes Logano, comes Logano on, the on the outside. Yep. Well, we see Joey Logano. He's definitely using those that second lane with those hash marks and, and trying to drive straight up off the corner like you had mentioned with that diamond earlier Clinton taking advantage of that that Kyle Larson car that seems to be getting tighter. Well what a great shot in the arm for Logano and for Ford here at Richmond. 33 to go now in case you missed it. We started this race on NASCAR's wet weather tires and ran the first 30 laps that way. Uh, without incident to a competition yellow. The track dried. They dried pit road. We had competitive pit stops and raced our way toward the end of stage one. Different pit strategies. Some were on a two stop strategy for stage two. Kyle Larson and Alex Bowman were on a one stop strategy. But when the caution came out for Kyle Busch, that negated the strategy call. Recently, Larson on a green flag stop beat the 19 out of the pits, but Truex took the lead back and has stayed right there. Now with Joey Logano in second, three and a half back. Larson four and a half back in third. Hamlin and Wallace the top five. I like the strategy call by Chris Gabehart and Hamlin. I think he's the only one has a chance. I don't think he's it's a long ways to get to Truex but Larson and Logano are in trouble. Eleven's coming. There's Larson right there. Denny Hamlin's about two tenths of a second faster than the leaders with twenty nine laps to go. Yeah he's he's already chopped a few seconds or at least two seconds off of the off of the lead. Twenty nine laps to go it's still a long ways to go and a lot of that depends on just doing exactly what he's doing right here being able to clear all these cars as quick as possible to lose the least amount of time as possible. Let me go back for a second to Coda and the ending of that race which was decided on a pit stop. William Byron's pit stop was nearly three seconds faster than Christopher Bell's but Bell did not have a bad pit stop. There were no mistakes. The team had to wait on the gas to flow and fill the tank before they could release him. And that's why the stop was three seconds slower. Bell did a great job trying to catch Byron. Now we'll sync up these stops so they stop at the same moment and you'll see the difference. Well they pitted earlier so they had to they had to take more fuel. That was the difference. Now the longer he's still taking a yep. fuel that race car. Yeah, and that was that was purely just because of the the time spent on the racetrack and the and the tank not having as much fuel in it. But uh, in in the end, that's that was the difference between between winning and losing. Christopher Bell ran him all the way back down, and and the way that their strategy was uh, had better tires, just much like Denny Hamlin does tonight. Exactly. Ross Chastain trying to stay on the lead lap here. He is 16. Yeah, so this is this is what Martin Truex uh, does not want to have to deal with. You see him loose up off the corner and trying to get by Ross. Ross wants to stay on the lead lap, but it's costing Martin time. Everything you do at Richmond is all about time loss. Uh, whether we talk about when you pit, the pit strategy, going through traffic, and this is where Denny Hamlin is going to have the advantage of uh, being able to maneuver through traffic better. Now he's got clear track and and Martin is trying to get by Ross Chastain and, and losing time every lap. That lap it was almost it was uh, over over half a second that lap that Hamlin gained on Martin. Look at all this lap traffic in front of Truex seven maybe eight cars right here where Logano and Hamlin a lot of green track in front of them all yeah, these lappers he has to overcome look at all these cars right but here. you see Martin struggle in the middle of the corner right there with the car pushing up the racetrack and that's from the traffic now push back and see Logano 
and and uh, Denny Hamlin, all that open racetrack in front of them. Yeah, and Logano doesn't even really matter because he's, I mean, he matters, but he's not the guy that can catch him. It's that 11 car right behind Joey Logano. All right, dare we open up Martin Truex's radio? Oh, man. Here we go. Stalled out behind them, talking about Chastain. Well, this is this is what we were talking about with Denny Hamlin. He's going to have less trouble getting through this lap traffic, and now it gets even worse for Martin because he's got cars side by side, three in front of him. He's got Ross Chastain who wants to stay on the lead lap, and it's, well, they're going to uh, have to go through the same lap traffic, but they're going to run him down. And they're all going to do it together, and the race is going to be on. Well, this is the most important pass right now, and it's yes, one sir. at a time. We got to get by Joey Logano, who is also. A very, very tough pass and wants to get everything he can out of the night, but he's not easy to pass. We're talking about a 24 17 new leader Truex to a 23 88 and a 92 on Hamlin. Well, caught Ham him a lot right there. Hamlin ran like a 23 50 something a couple laps ago when he was in clean, clean air. 20 to go, Larry Mack. Mike, I'm about to retire from the trend business. I just haven't <laughs> been working out this. Okay. Uh, in fact, we've not even had an overtime finish this year. But going back and looking at the two Richmond races last year, the average of the last caution was lap 386, 14 laps to go, which is about five laps away. All right, thanks. Who's the hardest car in the business to pass, Kevin? We just talked about this and had all the drivers tell us last week. It's that one car, Ross Chastain. Well, all of them said the same thing. Even, even Ross, Ross. Chastain. <laughs> yeah. Ross, Ross might be hard to pass, but so is that 22. So there, you know, Martin got past uh, his his nemesis, and and uh, Denny Hamlin had a big mistake off of turn two, lost that gap, and has to start over with that battle with Joey Logano when trying to make that pass on him. Yeah, Denny tried him on the hot. Let's listen to the radio. Oh, hang on. He tried him on the outside and wanted to loss a ton of time to Logano getting settled back in here. You can see the drive up off he has over him. Denny Hamlin radio right here. Cool him back off, top bug. You got plenty of time. You got time to cool him if you need to. It's good intel. Plenty of time. 17 to go, and that leader's mired in traffic. I don't know. I think I think time is slipping away. I Hamlin agree. is only a tenth faster than Truex, and look at all the cars he's going to have to pass to get to the leader. You well, can't he, tell that driver that though. He's only got to keep him calm. He's only a tenth faster than Truex in this scenario. If he it doesn't look like he's going to get much clean air, but if he gets clean air, he's a lot faster uh, than Martin was in traffic. I think he's hurting his tires bad. Just like Truex mired behind Logano. Yeah, it's like they get to a certain point and you just kind of stall out. Losing your edge over them. Yes. And it doesn't help that these these cars in front of Joey are, are side by side. The more cars that are up there, the dirtier the air gets and the harder it is to to make your car work optimal. And then they've still got to get past Chastain to have a shot at Truex. Kozlowski Elliott, seventh place. Remember, Keselowski was the first of the leaders to pit. Actually, he and Elliott pitted on the same lap. 334. See that four car of Josh Berry, who's been so good all night, making it back up through the pack after the, the pit road uh, mistake and the, and the slow stop there earlier in the race. I think we've lost our edge with the goody in the tires, Denny Hamlin. I would agree. I also think Joey Logano hasn't. He's catching your leader, Denny Hamlin, still catching him. Well, we heard Joey talk earlier about how good his car was on the on the really long runs, and that's that's where we are right now. And Martin is still. This race is not over. No, he's still stuck behind the three car. And now the one car looking to the outside of, of Martin Truex. Martin's having, him. Martin's having a tough time in traffic. 38 to a 19. You can see it on your pylon. It's definitely catching him in a big way. And Christopher Bell coming back up through. He just passed Josh Berry and 
Brad Kozlowski in the same lap. That was a huge pass for Truex getting around Austin Dillon there. It's going to give him some breathing room on Joey Logano. Now right. these guys are side by side. Not what Joey Logano wanted to see. Not with Get out of the way. Go. Come on, guys. Yeah, and that's what you hope for at the end of these races is that, you know, the, the lap cars move over and, and let the leaders go at it with, with nine laps to go. Well, the last thing you want is a lap car being a factor. They're going to be, though. There always are. Especially at this racetrack. More of them ahead. Grala and Stenhouse side by side. That's who uh, Truex is going to catch next. Nope, that uh, Pro all gets resolved. Gilliland moves ahead of Stenhouse. Good move by so. Ross Chastain right there to just yep. get out of the way of Joey Logano and let them let them settle this battle with eight laps to go for the win. I can promise you there's a hungry driver in the on, on board this uh, Hunt Brothers Pizza camera right here because been a he, minute. It's been a minute. It's been over a year since Joey Logano won. They hadn't hadn't run like they wanted to this year and they've got got things sorted out tonight to have a shot. Six tenths of a second. That is the gap and traffic ahead. Well that is the key word that Martin doesn't want to hear is traffic ahead. Well without the traffic their lap times match 24 11 15 17. They're all right there, the top three. You get them in traffic, there's a massive difference between them. Logano knocked it down to less than four tenths of a second entering turn one. It cost him a little bit on exit, though. Well, and Joey wants him to catch right up to these cars in front of him. And you see Joey moving around, searching, trying everything. Half a second with five to go. Yeah, and Joey's faster right now. He was a tenth of, tenth of a second faster that lap. Tried to dime in the corner that last time. It's like Logano's just not having any luck getting off turn two. Two's his weak link. The diamond in three and four seems to work. Gives him that low and straight shot off of four. This down here is going to try in or a little higher. Cross back over. Get that flat exit. If Truex can get past Todd Gilliland here, that may give him the cushion he needs. Three to go. It's been such an intriguing race from, from start to finish here. See Gilliland up the racetrack. Truex down on the bottom. Gilliland's got good pace. Now Truex gets to his back bumper. Turn. He moves. Bumble Trouble up. runs straight away. Larson. Caution is out. Oh, Bubba Wallace got the back goodness. of Larson right there. And that changes everything. It sure does. With two laps to go, and Truex more than half a lap away from taking the white flag, after which the next flag would end the race. We have a caution. And we will reset for overtime. Kyle got loose. Yeah, Kyle got loose, checked up, and, and Bubba was just anticipating him having that same pace to get get in uh, in behind him there, and just misjudged it as as Kyle lifted and turned him around. Some history there, quite a bit of history between those two. Just when you thought it was safe to engrave the trophy. Oh. Not at all what James Small wanted to see. Not probably what any of these teams wanted to see. That Logano wanted it. Yeah, and, and you're going to have to pit. <laughs> I mean, you got no choice there. With 100%. The, with, with the way that the tires drop off, you've got to pit. So. Guess what, guys? Well, now we say that, but with 15 cars on the lead lap, we're pitting. I'm pitting. I, right. I, I, I was the first car here several years ago, pitted, came out seventh, and by the time we got to turn one, I had the lead. Okay. I mean, it's, it's that big a difference. So we'll see if, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're going to pit. 
but that is definitely not what Martin wanted to see. This is going to get wild. So 15 lead lap cars. Pit road, guys. Right here on pit road. This thing could get one. Plus Chastain, the free pass. So there'll be 16 drivers with a chance to win this. Here they come to pit road. Well, those are. Th Jamie. What a turn of events here. Martin Truex Jr. on the radio right away. You got to be kidding me. They said, come on, bring it to us. Same with Joey Logano, put four tires on here. Pit crews must step up and perform and make it happen. You see the 11 in as well as the 23. Slow stop on the 19. You see the 22 up beside him. Keep an eye on Denny Hamlin. It's going to be close here, guys. Hamlin He's going to get him. 11 to the little point. How about this? <laughs> Denny Hamlin had led twice for 10 laps tonight, and he comes out of pit road with the lead. plays a vital role. They can determine races. It's a hard position to be in because you're only working for nine seconds. And if you work longer than that, you've had a bad day. They might be some of the MVPs of a race weekend, any given weekend. We always use the NFL equivalent of special teams. And uh, they can make or break you. They can take a race that you've dominated and cost it for you. Or they can take a race where you've just been a contender and make you a favorite with a great stop to get you out in front. for fourth, right? Four. We're under caution going to overtime in Richmond. The two cars that got together to bring out the caution, Kyle Larson and Bubba Wallace. Well, let's unpack this, Clint. Watch this. Kyle Larson gets spun out, right? Obviously, he got loose and gets spun. Saves the car, mind you. Gets the thing straightened back up. Only loses to a couple spots. Comes back sixth. Now watch this pit area. See, he gets it gathered up, keeps it straight, only loses a couple spots because they were that far ahead. Pit road uh, opens. He gains two spots, goes right back to the very position. The guy that spins him out has trouble on pit road. He is now 16th, Bubba Wallace. Holy cow. Trouble on the left side on Wallace's pit stop. They, whoa, whoa, they had to hold him up to tighten the lug. What a change of events that was. And there's the race off. Hamlin ahead of Truex, ahead of Logano, and Larson comes out for it. Well, we, we saw how good Martin Truex's car took off on the restart last time, so we'll see if he can do that again here with Denny Hamlin in control of the race. Two of Joe Gibbs' Toyotas fighting on the front row. It's overtime, sponsored by Credit One Bank, Green, White, Checker, Logano and Larson, Byron and Elliott, Bell and Kozlowski. Here we go. Tenny with an early launch in the restart box. Well, you see Martin chase him all the way down there with the side draft, trying to hold him at bay so he doesn't get clear. Tenny ran him up the racetrack a little bit. Still there, side by side. Still holding tough on the outside, Martin Truex Jr. 
This Logano's car takes off good too. Looking to the inside of Truex. White flag. Truex trying to hold off Larson. Logano. Oh! I don't. He didn't like what he saw. Truex come down door slamming it down down the back straightaway. Denny, Denny Hamlin, Hamlin winner. Home track win for Hamlin in the Toyota Owners 400 crash in turn one. As Larson and Truex got together Way again go. after the flag. Wow, way to go, guys. This Thank you. Pit crew. Thank you, pit crew. Absolutely. Oh. Man, Martin's mad at everybody. I didn't see what, what Denny Hamlin did wrong. Hamlin gets his 53rd career win. 13th on the all-time win list. Oh, well, that was certainly... True X. I don't know why he was so mad. Well, but then he was mad at his teammate too. I know why he's mad. He lost the race. Yeah, and, and didn't see what happened right there. And, and Larson was like, "Hey, you're gonna run into me. I'm gonna shove you in the fence and take this spot." I feel like that was warranted. Oh, I agree. And then he ran into the back of his teammate, which I didn't see anything that that uh, Denny Hamlin did wrong. Racing for the win, but in Martin's defense. Everything just unraveled there. <laughs> For Hamlin, what we just saw. 13th different season with multiple victories, and this is his fifth win at Richmond. For Joe Gibbs Racing, career win 211. 11 drivers account for their wins. Great day for Joey Logano at 22 car. They needed this in a big way. He told us before the race, thought his car was good, and it was, wasn't it, Kevin? It was. But what a day for Denny Hamlin. Winning in his hometown, you talked about how important it is and, and how awesome it is to, to win in, at your home racetrack, and he gets to do that again, Clint. Hamlin led three times for 16 laps. Truex led more than half the race. It was his to win. Caution comes out, took it from him. Pit over. crew, it was one in the pits tonight. Then he ran over a few of them at the end. <laughs> wow. It's been a while since we've seen Truex that mad. He was hot. Truex ends up fourth, crossing the line even with Larson, and then Elliott fifth. Yeah, I know why he's frustrated, but I just want to know why he's so mad. Regan? Well, for the fifth time in his career at his home track in Richmond, Denny Hamlin, you find a way to get the win. Your pit crew on the final pit stop gets you out front. You did the job from there. Yeah. Yeah, all pit crew. This is a team win for sure. Uh, this trophy needs to go and, and to each one of these pit crew members' uh, house. It just did an amazing job. They've been killing it all year. Uh, thanks to Mavis Tires and Brakes for uh, coming on. Man, we got some good runs with these guys. So thanks to uh, Jordan Brand, Coca-Cola, Shady Rays, uh, just everyone that makes this happen. It's just such, such a great feeling when you know you can come in and have a pit crew like that. Denny Hamlin wins in Richmond on Easter Sunday. 228 laps led by Martin Truex Jr. and everything changes at the end of this race. Martin, take us through the emotional roller coaster that it was. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's unfortunate, you know. But fortunately, that's, this has happened here a few times uh, over the years. So, um, yeah, we we're you know, in a great spot and um, had a great auto winners Camry all night long. And the guys did a really good job. Just uh, got beat out of the pits and then, you know, got, I don't know. He jumped the start and then just used me up in turn one. So uh, definitely sucks, but uh, you know, a good solid day and another another car capable of winning. So we'll just have to uh, come back next week try to get him again. Thanks, Mark. Yep. Well, I mean, I mean, he was right at the line. It was. It I was, said he left early in the you know in its zone, but I don't know that he jumped. It.
All right, one more look here. You have to get to the white line before you fire off for it to be a legal restart. Well, you see the, that's the start of the restart zone right there. Definitely rolled, definitely um, rolled before the line. Well, i tell you what he did. He won. Yeah. NASCAR is saying the restart was not under review. So let's get back to Jamie. Kyle Larson ends up third after all of that. Just take us back to the moment where it looks like you got loose and you spun out and you were able to save it and then salvage this great finish. Well, I was a little bit loose and then I got finished off there. So uh, thankfully it all kind of just worked out and, and I didn't, you know, I only lost whatever, you know, a spot to Bubba and then to, to Byron there. I was able to keep it going and then my pit crew did a really good job to uh, get us off pit road, gain us those spots, restart fourth and, and gain one more. So, um, I will take a third after what could have been a lot worse there on the front stretch. So uh, proud of the HendrickCars.com team, proud of Chevy, uh, everybody, Hendrick Motorsports. So it was a good good weekend for us, you know, getting the pole and winning a stage and, and you know, getting back to third there at the end. So uh, happy about that. A lot of rubbing, a lot of marks on yours and the 19 car. What happened between you two? <laughs> I think he was just mad, you know, like he was he was mad that the 11 used him up on the restart. That's probably where it really started from. And then you know, the 22 got to his inside one two. I got in behind the 22 and he just turned left across my nose and uh, had me up on the apron off a of two. And then I don't know if he thought that I just piled it in there, but then he door slammed me down the middle of the back stretch. So you know, I just figured in three and four, I was going to use him up a little bit. So I think he just is more mad at Denny, but I was the closest one to take his anger out on. So uh, I'm sure I haven't seen a replay either, but um, I'm I'm guessing the replay looks the way I kind of saw it one and two, and then he'll he'll realize that and and probably be all right. You know, Martin Martin's one of the most re, probably the most respected guy uh, in the garage area. So I was surprised when he turned left on me down the back stretch, um, and then again after the checkered. But um, it's all good. I, I I hope he doesn't have any hard feelings to me because I definitely don't towards him. I like I said, I got a lot of respect for him. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. Let's have one more look at this restart. Hamlin on the inside, Truex on the outside, and we'll carry them through turns one and two. He definitely rolled right at, right before he got there. It was right it, at the line. Was it close? Yes. But those cars are still door to door. I mean, he he got off that. Getting in position right there, him moving him up a little bit is where his frustration was. That's where the race was lost because not only did it. But losing the battle, it opened the door up for the 22 to get under him, too. Yeah, but, I mean, gosh, we're racing for the win. It wasn't like he turned him sideways or anything like that. He went up the racetrack a little bit, and and they rubbed doors. But, uh, you know, I think I think Martin's just frustrated with the way that the end of that race turned out. And, um, you know, he wound up not winning. And, and then uh, it, all, it all really unraveled for him right there. Got beat in the pits. Not on the restart. Denny Hamlin celebrates as winner of the Toyota Owners 400 at Richmond.